Do you want your daughter going into the bathroom with Buck? Uh, with Buck? Who are the group of people saying, like, hey, trans people are real, we should alleviate their problems as much as possible. That might even mean some responsible exploration in high school with puberty blocks or something maybe, uh, but we should be careful. We need to make sure that we're having challenging conversations with these children. We're not just force feeding kids drugs to make them interested, right? Nobody has that opinion. On the left, you've got people saying you should be able to identify as deer, as activists online or on college campuses. And on the right, you've got people saying that like, I don't think trans people are real at all. So like when those are the only two positions that exist and when society tends to culturally shift left over time, it's not surprising that it's gonna move more and more and more extremely far to the left. Like, you can't go from screeching for decades, I think trans people are fake, it's bull to being like, okay, maybe trans people are real, but can they please not be real until they're 18? Like, mother you lost that fight already because you never wanted to hold that position. What do you mean? But like, how could you say that? Like, how could you say that when like me and Buck are sitting right in front of you telling you that's not the case? And like, hey, hey, I'm Buck Angel. I'm a transsexual man. I transitioned from uh, being born female to living as a man 30 years ago. And now I'm so old, they call me Trampa. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you know, it's, I didn't I didn't know if I was screwing up when I was addressing you by the wrong pronouns before the show, because I actually am so confused. I didn't know which way to go. <laughs> That's actually a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> Destiny, how about you, sir? Uh, hey, my name is uh, Destiny. I do, I guess, far left leaning content, political content on YouTube, not on Twitch anymore. And um, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, Nick? Uh, I'm Nick Riccada of Riccada Law, a small law firm in central Minnesota. I have transitioned from man to man. Uh, and wow, you can't even tell. I, I know. <laughs> It was a failed. It was a failed transition. One of the botched stories that you hear about. Uh, so it's it's looking grim for me. Then, Mr. Girl, please tell us a little bit about yourself for new viewers. Uh, my name's Mr. Girl. Uh, I know the name makes it sound like maybe I'm trans or non-binary. I, I, I'm kind of a gender abolitionist, I guess. I just I believe in in biological sex, and uh, I don't I don't believe in gender that much. But I like I, I don't want to be put in a box, so I call myself Mr. Girl and. Uh, you know, that's my gamer tag. That's it. Very good. Uh, I'm going to be trying to uh, give everybody a chance to talk and uh, interrupting now and then uh, just, just so we can get an answer on things. Nobody like it gets confusing. We're all very passionate about this stuff, but uh, I want to make sure the audience gets their answer that they crave because everyone hates evasive debates. But Mr. Girl has given me a list of questions here to get the conversation started. Um, I've randomized the order we're gonna go in. Trampa, Buck Angel, I'm gonna start with you. Gender is a hotly debated topic between political groups, but rarely debated within political groups. Within political groups. Both conservatives and progressives are reluctant to acknowledge that their positions are even up for debate. Is your position up for debate? What is your working definition of man woman, sex, gender, and transgender. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, my positions are not necessarily up for debate. So I believe in biology. So I'm kind of gonna be this trans person who's possibly gonna be more uh, leaning towards probably most of what all of you guys talk about. So I believe in biology. I believe that biology is real. I am a biological female, even though I don't look that way. Uh, I believe gender is on some level could be socially constructed though i do think it, it does pertain to the sex um what were the other what were the other ones am, am i gender sex uh definition of man woman oh, sex right gen- great question definition of of a, of a man or a woman is a bi- it, it pertains to biology so an adult human male an adult human female those things i'm very strict on i am not a, a man i am a transsexual man so I am different than all of the guys sitting here. And I acknowledge that. So my, my, it's not up for debate with me in any way, shape, or form. I 100%, the only reason I'm a transsexual person is because of biology. If biology wasn't on the table, I wouldn't be having the conversation of why did I need a sex change? So, so no, I'm very, stu- now, the reason why I think a lot of other people don't debate it now is because it's a very thing that's hard to debate. You get totally called a bigot or a transphobe or a turf, or you just get all these names thrown at you. And uh, being a transsexual person, I can be in the debate a little harder than most people. But if any of you start having that conversation, you're immediately name called. So I think it's hard in the political space to be sort of middle ground or to have a nuanced idea of this because you get totally thrown under the bus. So I'm pretty hard straight on facts. I live in a factual life in reality. 
And uh, why I'm here is to talk about that and that it is important that biology stays in the transsexual space. Destiny, I'm going to go for you to, to a response to that because I, I think I already know Nick's positions. Do you, do you have any disagreements with that? Um, I don't think so. I think our, our any of our disagreements are going to like get really into the weeds. Like, I think that it's important to recognize that there is like a biological uh, biological reality. I think it's kind of silly that on on one end, like I understand where the desire comes from to say things like trans women are women or trans men are men, um, because like socially, in some instance, we wanted to be treated that way. But obviously, if trans women were women, then they wouldn't need hormones or surgery. So obviously, there's something else going on that we have to account for. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine we'll probably get more into the weeds on this. I will say one thing. Um, I, I think it's a little bit silly sometimes when it's usually conservatives will push you and they'll say something like, what is a woman? Can you give a definition? That's a really hard thing to define. Anytime we talk about any like highly multi-traded, multifaceted thing, it's very hard to give a strict definition. Like I, we were talking the other day, if I were to ask you like, give me the definition of a table. I want the definition that includes every single table and excludes everything that's not a table. Like how does it have to have three legs? Some have one leg. Are you able to sit on them? What's in between a table? in a chair like and that's a really simple thing we could get into more complicated what makes a building a building what makes a car a car not a motorcycle or a van or whatever um but yeah i, I think that I, I think that it's good to recognize that these things are like very complicated that there are going to be some biological realities that are worth addressing and talking about um and we need to be careful when we separate like social and biological fact i guess for the purposes of these conversations uh now nick what do you think about that what do you think about the definition of a man and woman as destiny puts it forth because i've heard that before I think uh, I think there's a way to overcomplicate issues for the purposes of discussion and semantics, and I think it was just done. Uh, no slight to Destiny, of course. Uh, he is uh, embroiled in in the language of gender uh, in this debate. Well, I'm, I shouldn't put you there yet, but uh, I'm guessing we're going to trend that way. But the definition of woman does not actually need to encompass every single aspect of every single thing. The idea that a definition must encompass every possible iteration uh, ever is is not actually true. Um, we accept common definitions with aberrations all the time because those common def uh, definitions are are useful for um, ordering society and not getting not wasting a whole bunch of time doing this. I mean, if we if we debated what a woman was forever. Uh, trying to find the the 0.001% outlier and say, well, that discredits the entire definition, then then that would be useless. Uh, that can just be uh, an, an aberration. And, and that's okay. Aberration isn't derogatory. I mean, maybe if you went and called someone like you're in a uh, aberration, that could be a problem. But generally speaking, uh, a woman has an XX pair of chromosomes and a vagina. Uh, that that solves most of those problems. There, I, I fixed it. Uh, and, and Biden can hire me if you ever need to consult on what a woman is. <laughs> what do you think about that, Destiny? There's less nuance. Um, I, I mean, again, like I, I generally agree. Like I, I think that in society, like 99% of us understand like what is a man or what is a woman um but when we're talking about trans people we are specifically talking about edge cases so i mean it seems like for the purposes of discussing trans people we kind of have to elevate our understanding of these concepts to a little bit more nuance than just saying like men have dicks and women have pussies because obviously we're missing a lot of the conversation there um i'm not really too attached to what words we use but yeah I don't see why we have to elevate the conversation, though. I mean, men have dicks, women have pussies is is a reality uh, that that we're into, and and there's no reason when dealing with an edge case that that needs to be any different. Again, it doesn't it doesn't well, like, do speak you, to the. Do you have any children? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Do you have a yeah, daughter? Not. Yep. Do you want your daughter going into the bathroom with Buck? Uh, with Buck, I don't care. Yes. So like, this is like the standard, like conservatives will say like, it shouldn't matter, blah, blah, blah. But like, do I want my son going into the bathroom with Blair White? Do I want like, people always use these like on one end to say that like, oh, I don't want these creepy trans people in bathrooms with my children. But then on the other hand, when you have like a clearly passing trans person, well, what do you want to do with them? Like, it's obviously like, unless you're going to tell me that you don't believe in like gendered but, bathrooms, in which case, right? So it seems like we have to talk a little bit more about it, right? But I mean, the, the example you just gave was my daughter going into the bathroom with a biological female. Yeah, but so it, that, I, I feel like that wouldn't actually like be controversial. 
Well, it would be controversial. Well, yeah, it would absolutely be. It would be controversial. <laughs> I mean, if somebody I like Buck came walking well, don't out you of have the a card that you hand no, out. If that somebody says, like Buck, way, I have a if vagina. somebody like Buck came walking out of the bathroom <laughs> in the wrong state, Buck would get killed, right? Oh, like no, depending I, on where I, you're I like, yeah. Yeah, that's true, actually. But prior to my transition, before I even looked like this, I used the men's room. But I'm going to tell you, it's different for trans men than it is for trans women, right? So, so that being said, when I was a butch woman, nobody, no guys don't care about me going in. It's different in the women's room. That's it's probably none of you have ever been in the women's room, I assume. Yeah, I have. So it's a different place. It's a much more. Um, it's a much more place where women feel they need to be safe on some level. And they also do different things in women's room than they do in the men's room. So, so men never got upset at me as a butch woman walking mm -hmm. into the men's room. They didn't care, but it's, you have to understand that it's a very, very delicate conversation when it comes to women and trans women are not women. Trans women are trans women. And when you start, you have to understand it's very important that we distinguish this for, for many reasons, but one reason being this type of conversation. And a, a lot of trans women these days, well, I wouldn't use a lot, but some trans women don't want to pass. I pass. We call that passing, right? I made it so I look like a man. I can walk the world as a man. No one would ever even know that I have a pussy unless I like literally show you or talk about it. That was the whole point of my sex change and so today people don't want to look like a woman they want to look like a woman with a beard or not even trying and then of course women are going to get mad if they go into the woman's room they feel they feel unsafe and and that is a real thing that needs to be discussed without everyone being called transphobic it's unfair for women not to be able to have that conversation I, uh, is joining us uh yeah. go ahead max I'll, I'll, were you going to address that I think I think I think Destiny uh, is running interference for uh, some <laughs> trans activists and, and <laughs> progressives here, because yes, you can come up with a practical situation where okay, the definition of man and, and woman is suddenly blurred. But we could also just as easily say, trans women use the women's bathroom, but not because they are women. You don't have to be a woman literally to enter a, a bathroom that has a picture of a woman on it. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think, agree. I okay, okay, cool, okay. So I think that part of the reason we're overcomplicating these definitions is because trans, some trans people, not all, and some trans activists and progressives um, can't stand the idea that like trans, a trans woman doesn't get to actually be in the real literal box like woman. And so they want to just expand the definition of woman and just stretch it out until they can just put it around themselves. And... Um, and like you can do that, like like Nick was saying, like, uh, yeah, you an expert, a super expert in a field can can blow your mind with like all the things that go into being biologically female. But walking down the street, yeah, women ha have XX and they, they have pussies. And I think that we're we're using that hyper expert lens to kind of disintegrate the idea of a woman in normal social situations where lay people are just like talking to each other so that trans people can feel like they are technically literally biologically actually the the sex that they want to be i think that for on the back of that i think to guide for the rest of this conversation i think it's really important that we distinguish between what we're saying on the panel and then kind of like the newer age of trans something ideas um, mm -hmm. I, I think um, Buck mentioned something earlier. I don't want to put any words in your mouth, but something that Buck mentioned that I've, I've seen a lot on the internet was that in 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 the great olden days of the '90s, of uh, you know, like going back even just like one decade ago, it seemed like if you were a trans person, um, your your goal was to pass as a not as a cis person, but as a whatever gender you wanted your expression to be. That was like what you needed to do. That was the whole point of 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 getting gender uh, affirming surgeries, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. But nowadays, there's a newer thing where you have people that are identifying as things that have no interest in passing. Um, and I think that their ideas, those newer ideas are going to be su substantially different than what a lot of other trans people's ideas are. So I think when we talk about these things, we have to be careful to, to, to yeah, to, to differentiate between them. Because some of the people that you bring up, Max, like if I had conversations with these people, I would be called trans, I haven't, I got banned from right. Twitch for being transphobic. So that's <laughs> like, that's the, the nature of those conversations versus like more traditional trans people, which sounds weird to say, um, are going to have 
have like a totally different set of like how these things all intersect with one another. Yeah. No, it's not weird to say. I have to tell you, it's why <laughs> I, it's why I actually call myself a transsexual. Yeah. I'm not transgender. I'm transsexual, and I have always made this huge point. If you all know and follow me on Twitter, I'm like I'm a transsexual. That is somebody who was born in one gender or one sex and wants to look and feel like the other sex. We make a huge effort to pass. We make a huge effort. I, I don't. I'm not a trans person. I, I'm. I call myself a man. I'm male. My everything says male on it. That is the whole point of me transitioning. Today we have this newer space where you don't need gender dysphoria. You can just be trans without any diagnosis. I have a disorder called gender dysphoria, and there's a huge part of the trans community that does not want to acknowledge that. They say anyone can be trans. I don't know even know what that is. That is nothing to do with me or people like me who actually feel like we have a disorder. We've been diagnosed in it. We deal with it. We do this in order so that we can walk the world happy and free. So there's two different places in this trans community. Can I jump uh, in here? Or was I just I was brought in for comedic relief? Yeah. You're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would just have like the woman sit here, be quiet the whole time while you all talk oh. about what women want. I think that would be cool. And <laughs> what they, they, they are. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, before we get into trans culture, Lauren, uh, could you give us your working definitions of man, woman, sex, gender, and transgender, anything else that you heard since you were joining us? Uh, these oh. are just the basics. By the way, I don't think I've heard the term transsexual in about 20 years. I didn't know we could still say that. Well, yeah. you can't. <laughs> yeah, you can. yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I'm telling well, you, you, can. you, you well, can. We all got a transsexual pass from Buck. Yes. Did, did everyone come in here and like give their definition of each of these terms at the beginning? Yeah. That's or my one first discussion didn't, question. Uh, Sorry. One person didn't come in here and give any terms or definitions at all, but... You're, you're replacing Brianna Wu, so you have to try to represent her positions as best as possible. I'll, I'll do my best. Have you heard of trans truthers before? I'm going to need you to bring your voice way down a couple octaves to yeah, I mean, I'm Brianna already Wu. pretty low here, man. Jesus. Okay, <laughs> so, that oh nice 14 year old boy going through puberty voice. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've got a lot of trans truthers that actually do think I'm male to female already. So uh, I, I'm going to do my best here. They've done, oh, they're the people that post those like photos of Kyle Rittenhouse and they're like, look at this. Yeah, <laughs> like, look at his hip size. Male. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah. Uh, male. Yeah. Uh, someone who is biologically. Um, got male genitals, female, someone who has biologically got vagina, female genitals. Um, what were the other definitions? <laughs> Trans Man, woman, sex, gender, transgender. Sex, uh, I guess it can either mean the act of sex or your sexual body parts. Gender is your gender expression in society. Okay. Um, then this next one, Destiny, I'm going to go to you for obvious reasons. Uh, oh, if transal culture... Because you are you are the one who suffered from it most recently, I think. If transal culture is defined as a fear of societal punishment for disagreeing with progressive narratives about gender, do you think it exists, and has it gone too far? Um, I think it's important when we talk about these things to know that um, they're very localized. So, like, does it exist in my world? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> where I exist in a very online world, I'm on Twitch or whatever. Like, if I go to like Alabama, Louisiana, or whatever, am I going to find a lot of like trans culture? Probably not. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say that like we have, it's, I would say it's probably gone a little bit too far uh, when it comes to the online stuff. <laughs> um, I think that the the nature of the conversations has made it so that like it, if you're acting like a goofy child um i can say that if you're 16 17 18 19 if you're acting like a you, you're being weird you're having a phase whatever shit you're going through i can like kind of make fun of you for it and that's fine and i think that kids should go through phases i think that's fine we should all be crazy when we're 18 19 20. um that's that's acceptable but when it, when it gets wrapped up in gender identity all of a sudden it's become this like unassailable topic and when everything when you, like autism is a gender and when you've got neo pronouns you've got like a million different things um it becomes really weird to have any sort of critical or challenging conversation on any of these topics because now like you can't be an opposing voice you're a transphobe um you can't have like an opposing opinion you're just a transphobic person that wants trans people to kill themselves um and that's really frustrating and those conversations have gone like way 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 too far i think to where basically like the the, the mo now is if you see somebody that says something you disagree with um because of the tools we have on the internet you're trying to destroy their life in as many ways possible it used to be that we just got kicked off of teams now we're getting kicked off of social media now we're getting banned from youtube now we're getting banned from twitch now it's like every part like it wouldn't surprise me pretty soon it's like if you've ever said something 
something. Like you don't believe that a, a trans woman should play sports with cis women. You're never going to be able to get a visa card again because I emailed the guy that like oh, you know underwrites these loans. Or like like yeah, I think it's too far. I think it's got a little insane. <laughs> Mr. Girl, what do you think about that? That it's uh, highly localized and not everywhere, uh, like Destiny's saying about transal culture. It sounds sane, but it's a delusion. No, I I think that uh, I do, I think it is spreading very rapidly, very very rapidly. Like I remember um, telling some of my friends, like like you know, there's subreddits where like you can get banned if you say I define women as as having like two. X chromosomes, uh, the, including this subreddit called Two X Chromosomes. They will now ban you for saying that the title of their subreddit is correct. <laughs> that's so funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> and and so and my friends are like, well, that's Reddit, right? And uh, and I'm like, I'm like, you don't understand. Like this, like it's a this is a problem. It's like a spreading problem, and it's spreading super fast. And I'm like, you know, you can see it go from uh, a kind of niche, like yeah, super hyper liberal space, to a Supreme Court justice being afraid to answer the question of what is a woman. And so it is localized the way that if your house is on fire and only half of it is on fire, the, the fire, yes, technically it's localized. And like maybe you you can go visit the other half of the house that's not on fire, but it feels like it's spreading pretty fast. And it, it feels like it feels like an emergency. Buck, you're nodding. You've obviously oh. seen this develop to where we are now and been involved in it. Uh, what kind of perspective can you give on it? Well, I, I think it's really, first off, I think cancel culture is very immature. And I think that um, it's embarrassing as a trans person to be connected to this type of behavior, which it really comes out of a lot in the trans community. I think in, in some level it started there. And I find it to be uh, uh, really a way that trans people are starting to be hated more and more. And cancel culture is a way and a means to control what's being said out there. And I try to, they try to cancel me all the time, but because I'm an actual trans person, it's very difficult to do. And I speak against a lot of it. And I, I notice that's exactly what they want to do. They want to shut you down. But I do, don't necessarily think it's localized. I think that it is spreading. And I think it is getting into other communities and other spaces. But from my own perspective, I really did see it come out of the trans community when trans women or women mantra really became so powerful and if you even pushed against that in any tiny bit you were immediately you know canceled or called it turf or whatever the heck other stuff they're doing it's a scary space that we're in it's why i sit here with all you today and why i continue to speak out about it i think we can all agree that transal culture and cancel culture in general is super fucking gay <laughs> <laughs> i think that's where we can go <laughs> with this one. Um, it's it's everywhere and it's it's about uh it's about power it's about yeah. um abusing uh a status of minority which is you know some some people buck being an example have an actual gender dysphoria they have they have a minority status uh that that uh, should be in some ways acknowledged. Uh, whatever that manifests as, it should at least be acknowledged. But there's a whole wave of people who are riding this idea of, um, of particularly kids, let's be honest, uh, kids to teenagers and their struggles with identity in general, and they're taking them and offering them an opportunity to assume a status, and that status comes with power. That status comes with, I mean, it's it's supposed to be a burdensome status, but we're 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 flipping the script on that now. And and if you are uh, a trans student, uh, you are ex you are exalted by authorities, you are protected, and you are given authority over other students by the arbitrary nature of of your assignment, we'll call it. And and I think in many cases, it's less about actual gender dysphoria and gender assignment, and it's a whole lot about uh, a, a struggle for identity and then finding a life rope at the worst fucking time in anybody's life, junior high and high school. Yeah. Nobody likes it, and you suddenly have a way out, and that way out is is a way up, and it's by stepping on, stepping on the faces of everyone around you who's been fucking you over for the last couple of years. Um I just want to uh, jump in here. Someone in the chat pointed out I used the word gender to define gender, and that was a fuck up on my part. <laughs> I meant to say the uh, social expression of sex, not gender. And this is something I wanted to talk to Buck about, because one of my big concerns with transal culture and the big trans movement coming about is the erasure of 
gender being somewhat separated from your sex. So while it is the social expression of certain sex characteristics, like to be masculine, you don't have to have a penis. To be feminine, you don't have to have a vagina, right? And I feel like that is being a bit erased with the trans conversation. It's like, oh, you are a masculine girl? Well, you need to now have your sex characteristics mat match your gender expression. So like to you, Buck, I I'd be curious, why was it so important for you to change the sex characteristics to uh, what about was your gender identity publicly not enough being masculine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great you question. Just be a tomboy. It, it, yeah, I was a tomboy. I was all of those things. And we're not even Simon allowed to say says. tomboy anymore. That's why I'm a tomboy, tomboy, tomboy. No, so so I always was very masculine, even as I grew up. I, I'm 59, so I grew up in the 60s and the, in the 70s when we didn't even have any of these conversations, and tomboy was fine. And that that being said, I was always a hyper masculine as a woman. I was a very butch, you know, identified lesbian woman. But it always in the back of my head, it just was. I just there was something about being a woman or being called a girl that just, ugh, I always cringed and I never felt that. So I really did need my gender expression to on some level come out and be physically this way so that the world would see me as, so my gender expression had to be connect, connected to my sex expression, even though I didn't have an actual sex change, that's impossible. It's why we called it the sex change back in the day. But is that because we have attached the word girl so mm -hmm. much with certain uh, gender characteristics? Like, you know, th this was like yes. the big thing of the feminists, um, second wave of Simone de Beauvoir feminists. Yeah. They wanted to split gender and sex and be like, no, when you say the word girl, that doesn't mean feminine or masculine. But yeah. now it feels like we kind of tried that and we're going straight back to your sex is your gender. That's and right. It, yeah. 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 So, so, so again, I can only speak for myself. I don't know. I think they're twisting words. I think this new trans and I call it this new trans agenda because it has nothing. That's not where people like me come from. I, like I said, I went through many 10, 15 years of therapy before I transitioned. And, you know, that was really instrumental in me really understanding where I needed to go. You know, I was one of the very first people here in Los Angeles to take hormones and to even try it 30 years ago. I was an experiment. So I was willing to take all of that on in order to remove my dysphoria because I did have massive dysphoria around walking the world as a girl. So I, I think your question is fantastic. And I would say that even if I could still be living as a masculine woman, I wouldn't make that choice. I really do feel much more comfortable and live a beautiful, more amazing life I could ever even imagine having had my transition to live to look male if, last if that makes last big question here mm -hmm. if there were no association with feminine with the word girl mm -hmm. like if people saw girls uh, as having the exact same social standing mm -hmm. as men in every way mm -hmm. would you have transitioned physically oh i, I would have 100 okay. percent. yeah yeah because i do i feel comfortable being a man i, I even though i could have been a, like i said i lived masculine as a woman i did and i don't think it was the words I don't, I don't think so. Cause I mean, I didn't grow up with social media. I didn't grow up with any of what a lot of the youngsters are dealing with. And I think what a lot of the youngsters are dealing with does play into why they are transitioning and why they feel that they are trans with I, no diagnosis. I guess I'm trying to figure out like why the word girl would, would bother you. I, I, I really appreciate mm -hmm. how like honest you're being about this. Cause like, yeah. I can't imagine, you know, talking, <laughs> maybe this is a bad example, but like there are a lot of people that look at things about themselves and, and hate it, like Michael Jackson changing his skin color, right? Yeah. And I, I know if we went into the social sphere and someone said, you know, hearing that I was a white woman just really bothered me all the time. And some people it does, like it, mm -hmm. it seriously does. They don't want to be seen as white. They wait, don't want to be seen as Do X, Y, Z. Sorry, Lauren, what were you saying? Doesn't it, doesn't it bother you when you're, um, when the trans truthers say that you're secretly a man <laughs> i've been on the internet far too long for it to bother me that much okay yeah i know that but i think that's bullshit because i've been on the internet for a while and every little fucking thing drives me insane there's so something I, that drive me insane not that way i think she so, is well, lying just, yeah just, let's do that let's do that conversation yeah, around in two hours i think yeah. you're I, I think you're lying <laughs> I, I, well i know you're lying no i think i think I'm, my, my point is i'm trying to make Get out the, of my head <laughs> i'm trying no Lauren's i'm trying just to make one of the, the fellas leave him alone I'm trying, yeah. I'm trying to make a comparison of the way you feel when somebody says that you're actually a man is probably the way Buck felt when someone said that he was a woman, even though like he he is or right. was female. But what, but, yeah. What I'm getting at is there are a lot of things that we are born as in life that we're actually uncomfortable with, but for some reason in this one sphere of life, we're really, really accommodating for it. 
really mm-hmm. accommodating. For That's right. Time. You're right. In this time, we are overcompensating for it. N- number one, I, the world needs to know and the world does know I still have a vagina. I did not get a penis put on. So I could have that argument. I did learn to be comfortable with my female part. OK, I got See, my root. That's, yes. that's so interesting to me. I did. <laughs> I learned to do that for many reasons. One being that the penis was not what I wanted. I want to penis <laughs> i want something that i can use and work with and you know that wasn't what was going to be given to me so i'm like i might as well keep my vagina it's pretty awesome so so you see what i mean like i had to learn how to deal with something that is not male right and i had to learn to walk the world with that which was not easy but i did it i pushed through it and i did it without forcing other people to accept my space if they didn't i would just go to the other way and then eventually people just were like ah bucks are cool dude I don't know if Buck, I don't know if you had this feeling, but um, it, it seems like, um, so Lauren used the word like people call you a girl. I think that as cis people, if I am a cis person, if Lauren is a cis person, who knows? Um, but like as cis people, I think that when we hear people talk about our gender identity, it's hard to imagine an incongruence with the gender identity and right. the gender expression, because I, I don't know what the fuck that feels like. But it seems like when we talk about things like race, or other types of statuses. We don't have this like really strong internal model for what that should be. Whereas when it comes to gender, it seems like there is a really strong internal model for what your like sex should be. So like when we talk about like, people will talk about like transracial people, like I wanna be treated like a black person, I wanna be treated like that. Um, I think that for people that are experiencing hardcore gender dysphoria, it's there is a bit of social dysphoria where you wanna be treated as a woman, you wanna be treated as a man, but that's not it. There's another like really important component to where like, if you had a trans person that was locked on an island and they never associated with another person ever but there were like mirrors or they could look down and see themselves there would still be this like really intensely kind of disgusting or disassociated or uncomfortable feeling with their body because it's not just about being treated like a man or treated like a woman it's about having like the actual sexual expression of that as well and that seems to be unique to gender that, that doesn't exist with like race or other do things you not like. think that someone like michael jackson who like went mm. all the way to get surgery to change their skin color would not be disgusted looking at his body in the mirror um, yeah, but I think that, that I think he had body dysphoric issues. And I think you can argue that people that do like the excessive like facial surgeries and everything that these people have issues too. Um, but I'm just saying that it seems like they're like Michael Jackson stuff. My understanding is that that started when he got his first really bad burn, when he did that Pepsi commercial and his face got mm. fucked and then he went down the road of reconstructive surgeries. And once you started cosmetic surgery, it's really hard to stop for a lot of mm-hmm. people. But it, it seems like there's, a, there's, just, there's something fundamentally baked into us about our gender identity that's really hard to get away from. Um, No, that's true. That's why I question a lot of what's going on today because a lot of the trans people don't even want to transition like me anymore. They don't want to be passing as male or female. They call me, they say I have passing privilege. I'm like, privilege? Do you know how lot, how how I go to the gym, I work out, you know what I mean? I do so much to look this way. It's not a privilege. I really make myself look this way. So the newer generation doesn't necessarily want to pass in this gender way, right? So what does that even mean? Yeah, it's a, it almost sounds like you're saying we, we're making it too easy. <laughs> On some level. <laughs> you're saying, no, you're saying if you want to be part of the old guard, you want to be a real trans person, then we have to keep this obstacle pretty high yes. and you've got to fucking jump over it. Yes, I do do that. And that's why I distinguish myself from, from them and me because I have had, I actually have dysphoria. I actually have a disorder. Those, they don't even want to acknowledge it as a disorder. They, they want to think it's actually normal. It's not, what I have is not normal. I would give anything to have been born male and I still would. I hate being trans. It's not fun. It's not cool. It's not hip. It's none of the above. What about, what about uh, having been born female but with no dysphoria great awesome right yeah totally Either one. i would have chosen that too but i didn't get that i got dysphoria and so my point being is i had to go through all of this in order to be a comfortable person in the world that's why i don't relate to what's happening today when they say you don't need dysphoria to be trans then you're not trans you're something else because that's exactly what transgender and transsexual are we deal with dysphoric feelings and we have a disorder Okay, well, Nick is alluding to the social benefits of transitioning and saying mm -hmm. it's a way to basically just get a boost. You get to (laughs) you get to you get to be the bully against all your bullies all of a sudden, a total (laughs) power reversal. Do you you see that as like a primary reason people, young people are transitioning today? Or is there is there 
what what do you why do you think well, that's a good point i would do again, I, fake trans people are trans <laughs> fake trans people well i i think kids i think the younger generation they do see a benefit especially young girls i mean i had puberty i had girl puberty it's horrible it's not fun i mean i, I think it's different than male puberty on some level and so you know when you start growing boobs and you start getting sexualized and all these things start coming at you at a young age it's very it can actually create dysphoria and it can create another way of oh, if i was just a dude things would be easier so yeah on some level i do think a lot of the young girls are being told that it's easier to be male and i won't lie that my life did change but that wasn't why i did it but my life has changed drastically being a male i am treated differently i walk the world differently i have totally different privileges to walk around it's it's an actual real thing but it's not why i did it but i would say that i think some people think if i just become a dude life will be easier well, I think they're they're driven there, right? Like that's that's the issue. I know it's going to come up in a later question. I don't want to jump ahead too far, but but I mean that's the that's the socio cultural issue we're dealing with right now. Is is not I, I I'm not speaking for anybody else in the panel, but I I think most of us probably don't give a fuck what people do when they're an adult. But I think I think uh, where the, the issues come in is when you have a kid who's 14 years old and saying, you know, I'm, I'm really unsure of myself. Uh, I don't really know. Or I, I was reading a thread the other day. It was like, oh, this person wears hoodies, which is gender nonconforming clothing. It's like, holy shit. If a hoodie it means you're trans, like, I don't even know what the hell the limit is. It's it's this uh, it's this for lack of a. I mean, it's it's a popular term right now, but it's it's this grooming, and it, it doesn't have to do with trying to have sex with kids. In in this instance, it has to do with implanting <laughs> an ideology in their head, with uh, with shifting them towards this particular thing. And and fucking like it or not, there's a bunch of weirdos out there who really want to uh, do this to someone else. They want someone else to be. I don't know if they need someone to be, uh, you know, a, a partner in their struggle or whatever it is. But it, but again, uh, and and I think a lot of society is like this, especially now. Where they're like, I don't care what you do. I care what you do to my kid. But I do have to say one thing to uh, to Mr. Destiny. I, I have to take issue with one thing you said, which was that uh, that racial issue, you know, like race may not be as strong of a, a bond as, as gender. As a black man, I'm just offended that you have never listened to NWA and you do not know the struggle and you do not know the, the serious identity that race brings with it. Nice. And I. I implore you to read the book of Matthew Harris, which is all about racial identity and uh, and and being um, basically in tune and in touch with one's race. Based. Um, I never said that racial bonds can't be strong. I'm just saying I don't think we have an internal identity of a race as much as we seem to have an internal identity of a gender. Or if we do, again, I'll. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't mean to step on you. Yeah. No, it's all good. I. Well, I. I'm now trans because I'm stepping on you on the way up. <laughs> um, I'm. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you the the uh, the dissertation of Matthew Harris, which will argue the exact opposite. And the man is a brilliant scholar. Gotcha. All um, right, this one goes to Lauren. Whatever you were going to say, save it till after this. Uh, right. If a key way to avoid cancellation, we're still on translation. By the way, I I can hear the Tumblr people uh, screaming <laughs> at the validity of transel culture. Uh, being in response to the transphobia that they're suffering around the world and the internet. So if anybody wants to speak on that next, please do. Just representing their uh, their issues. If a key way to avoid cancellation is to cancel someone else, does that create a feedback loop where we have to express increasing amounts of outrage in order to stay safe? If so, how can we untangle, de-escalate, or otherwise stop this dynamic? Um, yeah, obviously, I think when uh, we think of cancellation, half the time people get canceled, it's just for vague associations and not jumping in on the dog pile. Why are you still friends with this person? You didn't condemn this person. I've been asked that my whole life, especially being in the right wing. If someone's like a degree more right wing than me, uh, where where's the condemnation, right? And of course, that uh, humans are selfish and they're fighting for that tiny slice of the pie in the media circle that they want to keep and they'll try to stay alive till the very end, no matter how many corpses of friends and, um, you know, fellow co-workers in this industry they have to step on. And it's more stepping on people. Um, yeah, that's that just seems to be the case, unfortunately. I don't know how we can stop that cycle because it seems to be the just the cycle of natural human selfishness. Does anybody else have ideas to de-escalate, untangle, otherwise stop this uh, vicious circle, cancellation? 
You well, did it, Jake. They stopped. Out. Thank you so it's, much. Thank you so no, much for that. No, speaking out on it. It's very important that we all speak out on it because if we don't speak out on it and we don't say it, I speak out. I'm like, you're not canceling me. As much as you want to cancel me, I say it all the time. Go ahead. Try to cancel me. Do it. And they can. How how do you get canceled if you're not going to let somebody cancel you? Well, if you get banned that, from all your shit, that's how you get canceled. I don't care. Keep banning well, me. Well, some I'll of us need to make them. money. Some of us got jobs, but it's my job. <laughs> this is actually my job too. But I, I okay, I okay. But let let. Well, I mean, I think I think what Destiny is saying is that please this translate is, for uh, me. Yeah. Communication is a huge problem of mine. So go ahead. Yeah, I, well, I, that's, I'm, that's actually my one of my strengths. Um, what he's saying is that this has cost him a lot of money. <laughs> no, it's not funny. I'm sorry. It's actually not funny. Yeah, that's, that's not funny. Money. Fuck you. It's not. It's How much money you <laughs> no, but I mean... for reals, it's not funny, and it's gross, and that's why I actually really it disturbs me beyond belief. Because I, like I said earlier, why are we not having conversations? Why everybody so goddamn scared to talk about things that you're not agreeing with, or you know what I mean? Why is it money? So I think scared? I think it I think it comes back to money. Honestly, I think mm. that there's there's making money and there's and it being silenced and money is also speech in a way like if you have enough money then you can just make a documentary you can start your own streaming platform you can you can do whatever you want like you can you can still speak mm -hmm. if you're if you're you know jk rowling mm -hmm. um, that's right but for everybody else i think that, that yeah transfer culture ultimately uh or can't all, all cancel culture is really about money i think at the end of the well, day I, I think um, we have ego, to an ego we have to be intentional yeah. I, I agree with what buck said we got to speak out about this stuff because there are some people out there that are just giant fucking weepy bitches who think that uh cancellation is is something you should do who think that flagging shit because That's because they get their feelings hurt is something you should do who think that they should use legal processes to go after people because they don't like what they said uh or or something like that and and those people are giant fucking sacks of garbage uh and also and also whiny pussies <laughs> I, uh, I like you dude anyone specifically I change my opinion on or is that just a general no, pure general. coincidence <laughs> oh, i wanted to change my opinion on this actually dick i think um this transfer culture thing will naturally end in 20 to 30 years and there'll be an extreme backlash because you're gonna have all of these kids taking their parents and schools to courts over transitions mm. that they regret I, I, and i think it's gonna be like a really bad hardcore backlash like well, that, that, that might be LGBT true community. and maybe we can maybe we can avoid future cancellation by trying to stay on the right side of history here but I think uh, when I wrote the fucking question, I was asking, is there anything we can proactively do about this? And you're saying just survive for 30 years. No, actually, okay, wait, no, we'll no, just, no, 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 no. You're saying, uh, let's just throw a bunch of trans, a bunch of kids under the bus. We'll let them carve up their fucking bodies and take yeah. hormones. And then once they get old enough to realize what a bad idea that was, they'll stop it. And then we can, uh, we can start crawl out of our holes and start making money again. Listen, Jesus I'm, I'm Christ, pretty black pilled. I'm pretty black pilled, but I, I mean the other that. option. The other option <laughs> the is the children, Lauren. The it's, children. It's like trolley, trolley question. You can yeah. have this go on for like a hundred more years, or we can sacrifice a lot of children right now, <laughs> hardcore, just like transition the shit out of everyone, and then this will be like a band aid off. It'll get can canceled real quick. <laughs> okay, so your solution so is transition. to transition more kids. That's not my solution. Drag I, them I think screaming we're... to the, the surgery <laughs> clinic. <sighs> How long have conservatives um, been waiting for that backswing to the left? How many decades now? True. Have they been true. I, I, even it's my thirty-year solution is pure conservative copium. <laughs> Remember when multiculturalism okay. destroyed Rome? It's gonna. It's going backwards any day now. I'm sure it's coming. So be the rich. The pendulum's gonna stop at some point. It's oh, gonna Bob stop and go, start going back. It's right on the cusp. What will that look yeah. like to you, Nick? The pendulum sliding back. <laughs> the pendulum sliding back? Yes. Uh, we, we actually, th the real answer to that is it will be absolutely fucking terrifying. It will be right now on overdrive because when we see uh, institutional power at risk anywhere in any institution throughout history, what you see is a massive ramp up of institutional power leading to that sea change. And and so what what you will get is an inflation of Transcell cancel culture. You will get an inflation of uh, this this hyperbolic uh, focus on these issues. Uh, the the overinflation of this issue. I mean, just 
when you when you go by statistics of gender dysphoria and you see just how few people it actually affects and to think about how big of an issue it's being made now but multiply it by 20 30 50 times what it is and and that's when you'll see the the pendulum start to to get to that peak and we're not even there that's what's fucking terrifying about it uh i know we were joking about dragging the kids to the to the thing but all the dystopian writers have this idea that that again this is a future question but um that the state will take charge of the children and and it it will be a thing and the parents will all you know kind of accept it after a while because that'll be the thing that that happens but when the state takes charge of the children i mean who's to stop who's to stop the transitioning and and where does that come from uh, that's that's the true answer of of where it goes it's it's every fucking time and it's horrifying I think you're, well, we will get there. Uh, the next question, Buck, I'd like, I'd like to present this to you first. Yeah, I had, I had one, I had one, one go thing. Ahead, I don't know. I mean, are you sure that's okay if I say something? I mean, it's my, yeah, fucking go. Head. Go. Okay. everybody's Moderate straight his ass, ass dick. Get him. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to say, I think another thing that is happening is kids are being raised with social media and social media as a concept, as a way to exist in the world is you take yourself and then you have like a fake self that you just construct. And so I think in a weird way, even without gender, um, kids are just learning that you present yourself by constructing a self that is just kind of what you wish you were like, and then blast that out to the world. And, and we all do that as adults. And then so it, it's really hard to convince them probably n not to transition because that's what a lot of what transitioning is. But we're all we're all already kind of like trans in a weird way anyway, where mm -hmm. we have so much we have the technology and, and medical stuff to present ourselves more how we want. But we also have the, the social media technology to construct like a fake self and put it out there. I think to kind yeah. of vibe off that, because um, we're doing revive in here. Uh, I do believe that there are everybody on the planet that has like their perfect system detailing why society is falling apart never seems to include that technology is a huge reason. Um, and I actually super agree with that. I think that one of the big issues is um, kind of going along with something I said earlier, uh, like kids today aren't allowed to be stupid and grow because kids today can get like infinite amounts of validation on social media that we never had before. Like back in my day, like maybe you had like a few close friends that commented on like your Zanga or your MySpace or your live journal and like that was it. But now like if somebody makes fun of me as a 17 year old, I can take this motherfucker, blow him up on Twitter and actually destroy his fucking life. And then maybe raise $20,000 on GoFundMe afterwards for a new dress or something, right? Like it, the, the amount of validation that kids are able to get on social media is probably insanely unhealthy because you probably don't want to ultra reinforce the crazy shit that people believe when they're in their teens. But it seems like we're able to do that with social media today more than we ever were in the past. This is something I wanted to build on too with just ease of access. Like if you went to a high school classroom and you asked kids like, what do you want to change about yourself? Everyone would have something, whether it be like race, hair color, weight, mental abilities. And the fact that, <laughs> you know, gender is one of those things that you can just walk into a room in the school and change instantly. Like that's, they would probably walk into that room if it were any of those other things they could pick as well. But it just happens that there's that counselor office for gender. There's those surgeries available for gender. There's all of that support for that one thing. So it's ease of access to this one quick thing they can change and get a ton of attention for. What were you laughing about, Mr. Girl? That was so funny. I just thought this the idea of, a, of a, like a high school kid being like, I want to change my mental ability. As True, well. I mean. It was funny. <laughs> Maybe not that one. <laughs> if only they figured out a way you could change your weight. Uh, Bach, is here was the question. Is gender theory undergoing rapid mutation on social media and infecting <laughs> the minds of teenagers like a virus? Or... Are we witnessing a genuine scientific and cultural awakening? Oh, no, it's a virus, 100%. I, I do believe kids are being taught this. I think that what we were just talking about, social media, all of them. I mean, I, I'm actually next to a large amount of detransitioners. And if you don't know what that is, those are young, mostly youngsters who transitioned and then realized after they did it that they didn't made a, make a big mistake. And that's so profound. I don't know if you all understand how profound that is. There are girls who cut their breasts off and maybe even grew a beard and then realized, oh, my God, I'm not really a guy. I actually really want to be a girl. So, so that being said, I do think on some level that this is really a, 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 a problem 
with within our society and within social media and within a way that we're all just sort of like pushing people to to do this as opposed to it that's why i said people don't have gender dysphoria anymore they're just self iding that says something different to me why would anybody want to be trans as if it's just this really great thing to be right so what is it's like i want to have cancer so i'm going to have cancer and i don't really have cancer but i actually have cancer it just doesn't make sense <sighs> Yeah, but have you seen well, like 3D printed cars? You could have all the good cars? parts of cancer. You're not talking about Mr. Medical, are you? <laughs> <Cars>. <laughs> well, like, okay, so like uh, they'll 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 get like a shitty uh, car, like a, a you know, and then they'll strip the top of it off, and then these guys will 3D print the parts to like a Bugatti Chiron and lay it over. It's still a fucking Ford Escort or whatever, yeah, but yeah. it's a Bugatti Chiron. That's what's being done with the yeah. with the trans thing. It's like. No, right. this is this is not the the supercharged vehicle you think it is, That's but right. they dress it up in in this enticing sort of shell. And it, it I'm I'm speaking simplistically, but that's the ultimate effect. It's that's it's, why I don't think it's societal, and I don't think it's just this new way, and we're all moving forward like that. No way, I do not think that in any way, shape, or form, because I see how the kids are, and it's mostly youngsters doing this. Where are all the adults in the room? Why are there not a lot of adults older cha- transitioning? Why is it all a very like young generation? Okay. Of kids? Because it seems like you Should guys I, are wait, all wait, hated wait. now. Nobody wants to talk to the older, the older card of the trans <laughs> movement anymore. You guys are all trans. You use bad <laughs> words like transsexual, which is basically a slur these days. Yeah, sorry. Guys. Should I should I just be Brianna Wu for everyone? Yeah, because like, it's, it's a bit of a circle jerk here. I'll be your Brianna Wu. All right. Uh, well, no, I think it's, no, it's, no, fuck that. Hold on. No, fuck you. No, you're no, not no, going to no, be no, the progressive no, no, no. argument. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, get out of here. If you get actually believe space. what you're about to say, you don't have to fucking pretend that you're playing a part. If you do, if you Can disagree, you, John, you have a genuine right. disagreement. So let's. Why are there not all these adults transitioning? They're, you know, if maybe if they had the ability when they were younger, when they were in school to transition, they would have. Maybe if they had the social acceptance to do it, then they would have. But now they're set in their ways. They're too old, especially trying to go on. Hormones when you're older, you can't stop a lot of that uh, that stuff that you went through in puberty. Whereas if you take uh, hormone blockers when you're, you know, 11, 12, you can really, really actually be quite similar to the other sex you're trying to transition to. So uh, yeah, maybe it was just lack of access for the older people. I'm gonna I don't think you think it's just you. lack of access, but that it's, that uh, this has to be. I don't be think part. any of this. But yeah, I, I'm gonna. You don't, you don't think any of that's true? Maybe, maybe. You don't think any of it's true at all? I mean, it has to be somewhat true. There have to no, be other okay, people. No, okay, hold on. Okay, this is the problem. Like Conservatives a, are just as much to blame as people on the left, okay? Here's the issue, okay? And I talk about this all the time. The problem is that when you don't have anybody that's willing to be reasonable, then nobody is going to be reasonable. That's the issue that you run into, okay? So when we look at, like, trans people, who are the group of people saying, like, hey, Trans people are real. We should alleviate their problems as much as possible. That might even mean some responsible exploration in high school with puberty blocks or something maybe, uh, but we should be careful. We need to make sure that we're having challenging conversations with these children. We're not just force feeding kids drugs to make them interested, right? Nobody has that opinion. On the left, you've got people saying you should be able to identify as dear as activists online or on college campuses. And on the right, you've got people saying that like, I don't think trans people are real at all. So like when those are the only two positions that exist and when society tends to culturally shift left over time, it's not surprising that it's gonna move more and more and more extremely far to the left. Like, you can't go from screeching for decades, I think trans people are fake, it's bullshit, to being like, okay, maybe trans people are real, but can they please not be real until they're 18? Like, motherfucker, you lost that fight already because you never wanted to hold that position. So, yeah, I mean, when you have people that are unwilling to occupy reasonable spaces, then, I mean, the conversation will only ever move one way. But I'm Do you think you might you, have I... a bit of brain rot from the internet and people in the real <laughs> world are not having just those two positions and there's a bit of nuance there? I wish no, that was the case. Really. That was the argument that I used five years ago when I argued against <laughs> crazy alt writers and stuff online, that it was uh, only online or that this stuff was only blah, blah, blah. But no, I think that it, it was only online. Now it's like in a lot of colleges and now it is like the most corporate safe thing to do. So it kind of leaks into a lot of our entertainment as well. And it's slowly like permeating all the culture because you've got this huge tech so backing that's never every college, before. every high school in America are telling your kids transition no, at nine years he's, old right now. She's being Brianna Wu because she's saying, fucking don't she's not don't respond to her. Don't he's saying that we're highly polarized. And that is obviously true, and increasingly so. And I and so I, I think we need to be less polarized as mm-hmm. as a way to get out of this dynamic. So like like uh so, like Nick, some of the ways that you talk about this feels he's transphobic um, say it he is a transphobe 
<laughs> okay, but you what's know, weird is that I don't think you. I, yeah, I don't actually, think you I think yeah, he is. <laughs> Call him one. I don't. I I I I think you're transphobic. No, I don't think you're. I don't think you actually are transphobic. You come across as like a pretty understanding um, guy, which I think is why. Uh, so I'm I'm left leaning, but I enjoy your streams partly because um, when push comes to shove, you actually are able to empathize with people uh, of different backgrounds, races, orientations, identi identities, or whatever um, on on all sides of the political political spectrum. But when you're um, but then you start calling people like pussies and 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 like I know I know you're kind of oh, yeah. joking, but you're, you're kind of not joking. But I feel like I I think we need to develop a way to disagree with people without completely um, shitting all over them, which I I kind of think is what Destiny is getting at with saying that um, it it's not it's not reasonable to be that polarized and that dismissive. I guess I just don't I don't agree with I don't give a fuck about what other adults do. I just want to protect the kids. I think that the way we empathize with kids and care about their well-being, we need to expand to all adults. Yeah, I, I just don't. No. I don't think it's right to. Well, yes, Nick. We I don't but think we don't it's right to. Because that that's the whole purpose of being an adult is is you the those shields that are put over you as you go up through becoming eighteen, uh, which is an arbitrary number that we've decided is adulthood. I get it, uh, but but as you mature through your life, there are various protections as your brain is developing, as you're going through all of these things, and, and a whole bunch of smart people have, have for some reason landed on this number, but we, we do a lot of protection for the purposes of uh, switching from concrete thinking to abstract thinking, from, uh, from being able to deal with criticism, to from being able to recognize the difference between a joke and an actual uh, okay. insult. And, but there's and overwhelming as, evidence that many adults lack these abilities and so you could say they should have them because we decided that by the time you're 18 you should be able to do these things but most people just can't and i'm not saying that they need to be shielded from criticism or shielded from their own decisions but i still think we should afford them empathy that you seem to be willing to afford a blue-haired uh trans mask lesbian whatever dear gender 14 year old that you're not willing to afford a 24 year old and i think that i just think there's a dismissiveness that um, makes it work. Like, there's no way to back down or de-escalate from anybody's positions. If if the de-escalation means you have to step toward the people who are calling you like a retard. Yeah. Yeah, but I I think you're I think you're mis uh, either misunderstanding or misstating my position. I I will afford the same level of empathy to any particular person. Uh, I don't care. Child or adult? I, you sound yeah, you sound softer or more caring when you talk. I mean, not, I'm not saying it should be the same level of empathy, but there's a dis, there is a dismissiveness when we talk about like, well, what about adults who are getting roped into this or pushed into this? And um, it's everybody's just kind of like, well, fuck them. Well, okay. Do I don't want anybody roped into anything. The, the reality, though, is that children are more vulnerable because we're putting them consistently into institutions where authorities are removing them from the people who have the actual onus to educate them on these subjects, and, and they're taking that on. We're giving that to the state largely, sometimes to private schools, uh, and, and sometimes to even, even small group tutors or, or clubs or whatever it is. But as we abrogate our responsibility to our kids um, and, and we, we give up our parenting in some way to something else, we need to maintain control over those groups. That's why children are important. But adults aren't being put into a school where they don't have an opportunity to turn around and walk the fuck away, get in a car and drive off. Uh, the, a kid can't, you, you can't leave. Uh, but as an adult, you can. You could turn around, you could drive, you could take a bus, you can get a golf cart, you can have a homeless person piggyback you. It doesn't fucking matter. You can find some way to get away uh, in, in large. Again, speaking in generalities, yes, there are people who will not be able to leave situations, but we can deal with margins on the margins. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is don't, don't you think that a lot of the people in the school who are teaching kids that they can you know, be female deer or whatever whatever it is, are um, they're also like roped into their belief systems. They're also surrounded by a net of people who don't want them to change their beliefs and who will get mad at them if they do, or and also conservatives. Um, like there's there are people watching this right now who will who won't even like the way that you are um, 
being somewhat conciliatory in your response to what I'm saying. There are people who are probably in your chat being like, shut this motherfucker down. He wants to groom kids. Right. And so uh, we're all being pressured to just go further and further and further. And like, and I feel like that's that cancel culture is not just going after people who aren't far left enough by, by default, by making the left appear so disgusting to the right with cancel culture, there's a, there's a reverse cancel culture. And now, um, it's it's a quieter type of cancellation, but I think both both sides are being pushed further and further, and it's it it has to grow. It's like the stock market, like it has to always be expanding. Something that I think is important too, like in do we do we believe that trans people are real? Because if we do believe that trans people are real and that dysphoria is real, like shouldn't children be able to get help for that? Because my understanding, uh, Buck can speak if uh, if you disagree, but my understanding is that like there might be kids that think they're trans when they're growing up, but they're not. But if you are trans, you definitely know around when you hit puberty that you're trans. And to not be able to address it then, or to not have the ability to address it then, because of, ironically enough, an intervention of the state to say that doctors can't talk to you, parents can't talk to you, that there's, no, there's nobody that you can turn to, that seems to be bad if you believe that trans people are a real phenomenon. Well, yeah, you can't just 100% cut it off because there are, and I don't like to call them trans kids, I call them dysphoric kids because they might not necessarily be trans. They could be gay or something. They're just dealing with some dysphoric stuff here. But the problem for me in transitioning young people at such an early age with medication, uh, I socially transitioned on some level as a youngster, but uh, I, the problem for me is I I immediate medication. And medication is not a positive thing. It can destroy, especially what they're giving these young kids. And uh, they, it is irreversible. Whether or not, whatever any of you think here, I know for a fact the medication they are giving these young kids is, is irreversible. And so that being said, it is a very small space. This, what I have is not as big as what the world is seeing. It is extremely small, and it's a it's a disorder that's very small. The the trans people you're seeing today, I think, on some level, are 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 being told they're trans by other people. It's happening in colleges, by the way. Ma massive amount of young girls are transitioning in college right now and going along with it. And then when you detransition in college, you get mobbed on, you get jumped on, you get called all kinds of bad things. So what you said earlier is true. You once you desist from the group, you're considered a bad person. So it's all over the place. There isn't like a very specific kind of road that's happening. I went through a structure. There's no structure anymore. And I find that to be extremely dangerous if you're taking a medical space. If you're just socially transitioning, that's fine. And I do think there are young kids who have dysphoria. There's no doubt about it, but we're willy nilly it. You know, we're just here, take some drugs and maybe you're trans and have top surgery at 13. And and all of those things are extremely dangerous when we're not really monitoring what this actually means. And we have no long term studies. How can you do such a drastic change with no long term studies? I definitely agree with that. But like for things like puberty blockers, at the very least, like if you have access to like gender clinics or whatever, this should probably be on the table for people that are perhaps dysphoric as children now. Uh, well, I'm going to kind of disagree with that in a, in a sense that, no, I don't think you should immediately do that. I think the kid needs to go through some therapy before of they course. start taking that. But they're not doing that. They're literally telling parents, and I have firsthand experience with this, oh, your kid is trans. They say they're trans. You better give your kid some of this. You know, you, know, you all know the suicide thing. Like, if you don't do that, your kid's going to commit suicide. That is actually horrifying that they say that to parents. I'm a parent. Sure. So and I'm a parent of a nine-year-old. I know wait, wait, exactly. Wait a second. This, wait, you're, okay, you're, hold on. on this, just on the puberty blockers. I'm going to add, add to what wait, you're saying. Okay, go. Yeah, what Destiny's asking you. No, oh, no, be, now you're done. Okay, <laughs> what I'm saying should is Should they that, be like, on the table at saying, all? You're criticizing like, the way yeah, they're on because, the table. Because now, now we've kind yeah. of gone to the other position where it's like some people yeah. abuse it, so fuck all of it. I do agree that- No, I don't. I do agree that some people. I do agree that some people abuse it, but like, if you are a trans woman, Depending on the on the cards you were dealt, male puberty fucking sucks. You're looking yeah. at fifty thousand um, dollar facial feminization surgery. You're looking at all, you're looking at shoulders that aren't going to fit your whole life. You're, you're just you're fucked. You're six two. Like there is so much to to overcome if you go through an incredibly masculine um, puberty. It seems kind of sad to say that. Well, because there are some therapists that I've I've talked to detransitioners too, and I've I, one of them told me that on their first meeting they were declared trans and, and issued drugs like first meeting i agree with you that's insane that's fucking wild but just because some people abuse it or fuck with it i don't think means that we should say no puberty blockers whatsoever i think okay, that we okay. need to have like a, a better everybody, process by which to help like children if they go on that journey to go on that journey i do agree okay, that right now in some places it goes too far yeah 
everybody, what's your minimum age for puberty blockers? Ideal conditions, everybody, everything's done exactly mm -hmm. to your specifications, mm -hmm. therapy, whatever. Mine is 18. Well, you've already gone through puberty at 18. Yeah, they're so done at that point. They don't need it. Okay, so now then you go mine, is, mine is 100. I'm, I'm saying I'm against it. I'm against <laughs> blocking puberty. Okay, do okay. everybody say what, what? Everybody cast your lot. Okay, Destiny. so, so, okay, Destiny. I, I would say that ideally, if we have good processes in place, mm -hmm. like responsible ones where children are having challenging conversations with therapists, like they should be, then whatever age puberty could start or, or begins to matter. So that could be as early as nine or 10 or 11, um, or as late as 12 or 13, it just depends. But like, if we accept, if I accept trans people, which they are, then if you are a trans woman, especially, avoiding male puberty is like the, one of the most important things you could possibly do. Nick, what do you think? Puberty, puberty, puberty blockers, are they on the table or not? Steven says Fuck nine. Off. He got a rebuttal. <laughs> <Fuck> off. <laughs> this might no, be the of course not. That Mr. Girl's talking about. <laughs> Again, it, it, in, yeah. in, in some like be beautiful, nice, perfect world where we have perfect therapy and perfectly, uh, perfectly therapeutic children, sure, but we don't. And what age? What age? No, I'm saying no age. I, I say no. But he's explaining. No, no, no. I'm saying in a, in the ideal world, in your hypothetical, you can have whatever. You can have a team of the best therapists in the country telling you. Twenty six. Okay. Right is after that, you. Is that a genuine answer, or are you avoided the question because because you're well, scared? No, he said he doesn't believe in puberty blockers. So that. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they should ever be implemented. Yeah, but when you started explaining why you don't believe in puberty no, was... blockers, you were saying that the way they're delivered is not ideal. So it, with an with. I was perfect... speaking in arguendo. Uh, okay. uh, are assuming destiny's argument that there were some way to actually do this i was speaking okay. of, but i don't i don't hold that position what if there were there isn't <laughs> nick what do you think of the trade-off that so you don't have to answer you don't about. have to answer the hypothetical because you don't believe it, that the conditions are possible no i don't believe the conditions are possible what if they were but they aren't <laughs> what if they were yeah. They won't be. Look, see, abstract thinking. It doesn't always kick in at twenty-five. <laughs> what if people live? What do you What do you think the age of consent should be if people live to be two hundred? If people live to be two hundred, but people don't live to be two hundred right now. Well, yeah, but what, what if they could? Are you the able age to of consent? Are, are you is, able to picture a world where people can live to be two hundred? Yeah, sure. But the okay, age of consent you, is set by state law. What would you do law. if you grew a third arm right now? What would you do? Jerk off while. Well, okay, so uh, so not. you are capable of answering hypothetical <laughs> questions based on the impossible. So for this question, I'm a lawyer. I'm of course, asking. I can answer hypothetical questions. So then, why aren't you answering this one? Uh, because I I don't think it's worth entertaining. I I don't believe in gender or in uh, in puberty blockers at any age under any hypothetical. Uh, what about the trade-off that Destiny was talking about, where if you believe in a trans person, them going through uh, puberty would be uh, horrible? And it would be um, irreversible in that yeah. edge case. What do you think about that? Uh, you know what? There are people who are born with things that are very horrible. And I, I am very sorry for it. Uh, but I do not believe in puberty blockers, even in edge cases. I, really, I, just, I just don't. And, and I know that it's like we've set up this cool thing where uh, we're, we're talking about, well, there's too much extremes and maybe we need to consider the middle. But um, I, I don't think that it's, it's valuable to say this because we go through all sorts of uh, – there, there are all sorts of issues that you're born into, socioeconomic issues, issues that cannot be and will never be solved by society or technology. Uh, and and it, it sucks, right? Like it, it sucks uh, that I was born – white when I'm a black man. It really does suck because I tried to get into the rap game and I ended up on fucking YouTube. Wait, but this doesn't, wait, okay, when we talk about uh, society, wait. hold on, this this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't know why people say this. Life sucks. <laughs> when we're talking about societal prescriptions, that 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 is the least profound statement I've ever heard in my entire life. Life sucks. No shit life sucks. But like, even if the examples you give, like, well, you know, some people are born into shows, uh, shitty socioeconomic systems. Yeah, no shit. That's why you have a progressive tax bracket and welfare. Um, that's why I have such a No, but those don't work. Like, they, it's, those I'm literally sa I'm don't saying work. That, I'm saying that the goal of having any sort of governance is usually to like address some of these imbalances, right? Only okay. Okay. I heard I heard opinion here yeah i just have a couple no. like, questions for i have a couple I, questions for nick just to follow up can i way. can i answer the Lauren, question I, everyone got to answer first yes yeah but after this quick after this quick Holy quick shit. couple questions is a uh dick do you want to make a ruling oh yeah lauren go for it okay thank you okay well now it feels yeah. like i'm just like getting a pity <laughs> like in here all right you're getting it because uh, you're a woman life sucks lauren <laughs> 
I don't think you should give any person, let alone a child, puberty blockers until you can prove pretty confidently that they are actually dysphoric. And one of the best ways to prove that they are actually dysphoric is for them to go through puberty. So I don't really think you can prove that someone has persisting dysphoria without them going through puberty. <laughs> okay, I, so, like, so, I don't want to give you uh, insulin uh, because I need to prove that you're diabetic. We're going to wait till your toes fall well, off and I see what happens. Well, like, whoa, 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 whoa. Diabetes and gender <laughs> dysphoria are very two different Yeah, they are, things. but there are probably ways through, but, through talking wait, to children we can figure out but you like, can't know it's retarded though because you don't give someone, give someone insulin it. until you find out they're diabetic <laughs> sure but i mean we do give kids ssris we do give kids medication for anxiety and adhd should all of that be illegal as well we don't cut into their brains to see if they but have an adhd isn't, problem there, there isn't like an age point uh, unless maybe i'm incorrect about this but there isn't an age point where it's like one of the distinctive factors in deciding are they going to have persisting okay. adhd it is absolutely i will say as a parent of a child with adhd the age is actually incredibly important because if you they do have these types of problems it's recommended to start as early as possible because if you do have a kid that's like severely adhd and you're like oh fuck it i'll wait till he's 18 his life might be okay. fucked by that because oh, they have no friends but then what if it was what if it was like cost where, where, wait wait wait, wait, wait yeah. what if there was a cost to putting them on early if you're wrong there is yeah. a cost right mm -hmm. when you're talking about amphetamines long term you've got potential heart side effects you've got like other weird like mind that can happen it, but like, it ain't like, like mood fucking swings and things like blockers. like all, all of these things that we're putting it ain't like puberty blockers i mean like arguably like some amphetamines or medications for adhd can have more like serious side effects than puberty blockers and what, what you're talking about right? is that they they were potentially actually they were more likely to not have adhd if you had let them go over this certain age gap rather than you deciding to medicate early and then them definitely sure. having these ADHD. are the hard decisions that That's I not think a hard decision. It absolutely <laughs> is a hard. I hate that you're a parent. You're saying this. You're fucking dishonest. <laughs> fuck. Okay. It is absolutely hard to make these decisions about your children, which is why it should be kept between the parents and the doctor, and not some fucking loser. That's like, I don't think they should be legal until they're 18. Fuck you. I don't want you telling me what the fuck I do with my kid until he's 18. That should be a decision between whoa. parents. Rates that are should so be for certain things. High, it's no, not hold that on. Hard the, 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 if there are better ways to do this. None of us disagree with that. So stop with the stop with, with no. the virtue signaling of like, oh, okay. these systems are high. Okay, we all agree that there are problems. We all agree. Hold on. We're all, we're all wait, taking wait, indefensible wait, positions. No, no, no hold on. It's no, not, that is not true. Your position might be you indefensible. Don't, you, don't project. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let me finish my thing. You, Let me finish you, my point. You actually hold on. believe wait. you should be able to do whatever you want to your kids before? No, they're I think that it should be okay, a wait, medically so informed. We, we it should be a medically informed. It should be a medically informed decision where the government can't arbitrarily restrict saying, oh, your kid has to be 18 before we can take this fucking drug. Well, what if what if what if your doctor said they want to cut your kid's head off? Like your kid's too unhappy, so we have to chop his head off. Like, I don't know. Point, if he's a League of Legends just, player, you know, maybe that's the only route left for him. <laughs> some, you know, I'm it depends. Saying, at, at some point, we have to say, like, no, actually, you can tell doctors they can't do certain things to kids. Like, you don't mm -hmm. actually believe that it's it's a the sanctity of the parent doctor child trio. It should be like un. When it comes to something like related to like trans issues, probably. When it comes to like chopping their head off, probably not. Right, but I'm, well, I guess about, that's my uh, point. Is how close? How close is is transitioning to to like a obviously I think it's destructive? It's at least a few doors thing. down. I think M maybe even on the next block. Okay, There's a difference between transitioning off. and chopping people's heads but, off. Well, yeah, I would rather get my head cut off than my dick cut off. What what about legitimately? What about transableism, which is which is a rising you know sort of fringe issue for now? But it's the idea that uh, that some people believe they're born disabled. And so they get medically it's, disabled. If if your child believes that they're born uh, a paraplegic, should you be able to take your child to a doctor and have them snip their spinal cord and their in their lower vertebra so that they can't walk? Like, should if you there be able was to like, do that? The thing is, is that trans people have existed for as long as we've had like written history. It seems to be the case that there are some people that are born dysphoric. Their brains are wired wrong, or something gets turned on as they're aging that messes their ability to have th this congruence with their their gender identity and gender expression. And as much as we've tried, conservatives are like, oh, well, they just need more therapy, blah, blah, blah. We've tried the conversion camps. We've tried every fucking thing possible. We've had some kids that are assigned a certain sex at birth that they weren't because of a botched surgery. And you, it doesn't seem like you can just socialize somebody out of their gender. So if it's impossible to socialize somebody out of something, and if we have medical technology to alleviate an issue, why would we not use the medical technology other than to virtue do you, signal? Like, do you believe that body dysphoria is limited to gender, though? It seems to be the case. I haven't heard or seen any convincing arguments or anything to, to the contrary of that. Well, so, what about like I'll, guys who like do tons I mean, of steroids? Have you ever met a fat or, person? Or no, no, body dysphoria can be a thing. I mean, like, like um, eating disorders are real, of course, but this is fundamentally different than like trans okay. uh, racialism or trans like genderism or trans whatever, like these other types of things that people say exist. But yeah, I mean, I think people can be- fundamentally different. Yeah, the way, but the way we deal with eating disorders or with somebody like, you know, a bodybuilder, bigorexia, you guys heard of that? 
or uh, a woman wanting bigger breasts. Let's say, say your 13 year old daughter is realizing she's going through puberty and she's like, she's not going to have the huge breasts that she wanted. Should she, and she's really upset about it. All of her friends are blossoming and she's, she wants to kill herself. So should you get her implants or, or put her on hormones so that she develops further? Like, obviously the, I think the answer to this for everybody in the panel is probably no, that would be weird. But if she wants to turn into a man, then we're like, well, yeah, maybe we should consider it. To me, it it's much more reasonable to give your daughter breast implants than your son, I, th I think. But I, I would I would be against both. But um, for some reason, there's something very like protected and special about the way we think about gender dysphoria. But I think of it as the same as all dysphoria. Well, but like, I mean, like, but there are some forms of that that we would accept. So, for instance, like, if you were a woman and you had to get, like, a double mastectomy because of breast surgery, we would say, yeah, you should be able to have, like, reconstructive surgery to rebuild your breasts. Like, that's, that's not necessarily, or if you're, like, the victim of, like, um, some sort of horrific thing that leaves you uh, disfigured or it's with some scar, like, yeah, you do get cosmetic surgery. That's true, surgery but there's a, there's a big difference between that feeling like something you had was taken away from you and you, you're sure. trying to reconstruct I think the your difference life. Is that like, and, and a 13 year old that just wants mommy milkers. Sure, like, but I, I, I think a, the difference, difference seems to be is that like when it comes to things like eating disorders and stuff, there seems to be some underlying issue that can be treated without like I saying the that, person has I, to be, I, I, I know you think that well, all trans yeah. people can be talked out of being trans, but there are people no, that no, are way no, more motivated I, no, than no, you no, that no, have been I trying to do okay, it. Don't tell me what I think. Okay, what were you gonna say? Don't ever tell me what I think. Okay, I can't imagine doing that, my bad, go ahead. I can't, thank you. I think that anorexic people can't just be talked out of it. You have to learn how to cope with it. So yes, you could you could lose you could lose a few pounds, as uh, Nick would suggest, or you can um, just cope with it. Cope with the feeling that your body's not going to look and feel right to you. And so I don't. I think it's worth trying to talk trans people out of being dysphoric, especially trans kids. But if that doesn't work, I think it's also worth just saying, like Nick said, kind of like yeah, it sucks. It sucks that your body is not the way you want it to be. Why would you gatekeep them from like medical interventions that can help? Just so but that my you friend, can feel... you, but here I need to say something about the puberty blockers. Mm -hmm. I don't think you understand. It's not all perfectly yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all great. There are some horrible side effects to these puberty blockers. One of them being genital growth. Genital growth is very important for the older gener. When you get older and you need to let's say get a vagina, you're not getting that. Your penis has now been stunted. This is actually true and real. Not only that your bone density there are so many layers of health problems that that will exist once you put a child on puberty blockers and they are medicated for life now i'm gonna as a person who struggled in my gender and struggled in my life and struggled with boobs and struggled with female uh, anatomy i would say that i don't think that i think that is the best thing that ever happened to me that i wasn't put on puberty blockers so this idea that a woman's going to grow big shoulders and arms and all of that that happens but what's the percentage of that compared to the other people who just kind of deal with their gender dysphoria and move on and get surgery and do that we do not have enough we do not have enough um studies or understanding of what the long-term effects of puberty blockers are on these kids. Why would we sure, do but that? I mean, how do you, how do you get the data? What do you mean? There's tons of data. No, there's, first there's, of all, that's, there's not tons of data. Uh, that is my not friend, true. you're wrong. I'm, Finland, Sweden have done studies for 20 and 30 years, which they just shut down there are, because so, they said, yeah, so I can Sweden, send, you, I, I understand. Lying. Hold on. I'm not lying. Okay. There are there is very limited data. There are some studies, not but there, there, data. the There's idea that there data. is like lo, what are, what are, what like there it's this is a new thing, right? I know it's not new. It's new in the United States. It's not new in <laughs> Finland, Sweden, where they've been doing it for thirty years. Thirty but years. Can you explain that? Can you explain those studies more? Because I'm unfamiliar with it. I think that the would help. Studies in Finland and Sweden that they started, which was to give the children puberty blockers, which they did at eight years old. They did studies on long term. They followed these kids from eight years old all the way till they were adults, twenty to thirty years old. They realized that that it was not worth it. That they they actually did struggle still with their gender. Some of them desisted from it. So they just shut that down. They they know longer give puberty blockers in Finland and Sweden because they said that it, the actual uh, the actual usage of those is not pro it's more negative than it is positive. So that's why I'm saying we actually have studies on this. We actually have long term studies from other kids in other countries. Yet we're doing it here. That makes no sense. I'm, I'm going to look these up. Give me one second. Look it Sorry. up. Yeah, keep, email me and I'll send it all to yeah. you. They are finished though. They're barely people. <laughs> 
We have a, um, I, I believe, a trans person who wants to join the panel, who I believe is is more left leaning than mm -hmm. any of us. Is there room for one more? Right. What do you guys think? Excellent. Sure. Dick. Here. The, here oh the yeah. Captain. Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. Gonna take a second. So just you know. I probably got to jump in fifteen minutes, anyways. Have you okay. ever heard the game uh, Papers, Please? Anyone? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, playing that with Brittany Venti tonight on stream. It, you basically get to be an immigration officer and uh, kick people out of your country. Sounds fun. <laughs> Are you gonna have feet cams? Jesus Honestly, Christ. if I wanted to make good money, if uh, if I was real yeah. desperate, we'll get the feet Do cams it. going. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cancel me enough until I'm that broke. That's the only way you're getting the feet pics. Get on it, squad. <laughs> okay, while we're waiting, serious. Wait, I had a question. Before... I, oh, I had a question for Nick that I've been waiting to ask good. for like ten minutes. Oh, oh also, I, okay, I just want to read this real quick because I I know this is true. Oh, I've so argued this so many times. Hold on, I'm just gonna read it. So, part of the reason why Sweden um, pulled back on this is that there was poor quality slash insufficient evidence. The evidence for safety and efficacy of treatments remains insufficient to draw any definitive conclusions, which is exactly what I said. They pulled it back because people are, don't nod because you said that there was evidence that they didn't work. Okay, what I'm saying is that there's not a, there was not a lot of Long term, I data. said they stopped them. They I'm not stop. I don't I'm disagree with that. With I don't, you, my friend. I don't disagree <laughs> that they did stop them, but there's not like all of this data out here collected longitudinally about puberty blockers. Like, it's still they in have 20 to 30 years of it of, of, for how many people? Like, 30 people. They actually had 30 th trans people that they took from the age eight all the way up until adulthood. Okay, read it. Sure, I, I, okay. it, read it. I believe you that there is probably a longitudinal study with 30 people that were given puberty blockers. But yes. we have to acknowledge that like, there's probably like a little bit more room to study. That That's probably 100%. not the- percent I'm not saying we shouldn't study. I'm saying we should study, number one, before we give children what, puberty blockers. But this blockers. is the issue. How You have to give them puberty blockers to study it. No, you don't. You can actually do it on other ways. You're gonna use kids to study. You are actually, you, How else do you test medication up. on children other than actually, to use medication on children? Oh, go ahead, yeah. my friend. Use your child. Why Wait, hold on. I, what is the alternative? Are you going to give puberty blockers Which to child adults? Are we going to use to do that? You're not going to use my child. That's Who's fine. Child I mean, you, gonna... that's why you are able to you're add will and You're willing to sacrifice children for an actual cause like that? Wait, wow, you're willing to sacrifice friend. children because you're too scared to explore the research? No, I'm not. That's scared. That's what you're that saying. You're saying that like maybe maybe puberty blockers can work, but I'm not. I'm not willing to have anybody be even be able to be volunteered for any research like that. I'm not. I am not willing to okay, put a it, child under the bus. Sure, I'm not. Please. Then at least say I'm that not. like you're you you're okay that there's not definitive data out there and there will never be definitive data out there because it maybe can't not. be research. And maybe well, so then this is my whole will grow point. up like me and actually finally realize they're trans and have a beautiful life. Maybe. Okay. Well, that's a that's kids. a. But maybe Buck, that's just gay. Maybe they're not even trans. Yeah, yeah. That, that, those are all thought? those are all possible. But, that, possible. but what, I think. Yeah, but what we're saying is we don't know. So either That's we right, have we to don't know. we have to potentially harm kids by giving them puberty blockers, no, we or we have to, or we have to, or or That's what we, what we do with all drugs with children. Yes, but, there or is a we have to harm. potentially harm them by not giving them That's puberty right. blockers. Okay. So which which is so, which? so for me, I'm I'm gonna tell you, I take the road to not give them clearly. So but I think it sounds more through. like your your real position is that you think it's unethical to even do the research in the first. That's place. right, I do. Okay, why okay. didn't we just open with that? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea why we did it. But there we go. Um, I'm going to transition so I can get a word good in the one. conversation. Yeah. Oh. Got him. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just open Destiny's Dr. Mengele office for children to get all this research. Eh? <laughs> Is that the plan? Yes. Oh, I, were we going to say anything or was it just shitty mic night with uh, Lauren yeah. on the? Okay, nice. Um, Nick, are you yeah. okay yeah. with adults <laughs> taking cross sex hormones? Uh, if they choose to do it, sure. Are you okay with adults getting their hand surgically removed because they feel they shouldn't have a hand anymore? Yes. Okay. No further questions. Thanks. <laughs> Can I ask my question I have for everyone now? Uh, everyone, if you honestly, uh, everyone except uh, those of us who have transitioned, of course, um, all the boys, if you were in the right environment, like raised on Tumblr, you were in school right now, your teachers were telling you it's lit to be transgender. Uh, you didn't have any sort of concept of all of these ideas we're talking about right now, the dangers of uh, hormone blockers, you know, political conservatism. Do you think if you honestly look back on yourself, you might have transitioned? No. 
I try to no try to take yourself idea. out of the childhood that you had. Nick. <laughs> no, I, I no, because okay, so uh, I I just went through my childhood and determined that I thought teachers were largely idiotic. I did not have a lot of respect for the overwhelming majority of them, and uh, there were plenty of in instances where teachers tried to convince me that the world was one way, and I I resisted that. Uh, tons. I mean, I, I, I leaned on different institutions, different people um, than, than teachers. But like, if you put me in a public school system, I was an asshole. Uh, I still am. Like, that didn't change. But so I, I it's not like I was uh, thinking, oh, yeah, this teacher has lots of wisdom. So for me, no, I, I don't think so. Dick? What if the people you leaned on were, the, were telling you to transition? Then it, it might have been a little bit different there, but that would have mostly been my parents probably yeah what if so your parents if, are saying that yeah then then who knows right like that that's a different question but i don't right. you know it's impossible to to gauge the answer but i think uh if we're being honest we we all have grades of where we put people and that's to me that's the big risk of having this shit present in the school system is because there are kids who do not have stronger other uh, more trusted people than than the state, and that's the fucking terrifying thing for me is that it's holy shit. The state is involved with this. Okay, the next question has to do with the state, Lauren. I'm going to give it to you because you complained about not talking. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to hate it too. Let's hear it. The don't say gay bill or anti groomer bill mm -hmm. is a response to a seemingly irreconcilable political divide around gender and sexuality. If we take the law at face value, is it bigoted? Is it reasonable? How do you think we should talk to children about trans or gay issues? Obviously, I think referring to it at all as the don't say gay bill is just a misrepresentation of the bill in general. If you read it, it actually only says the words gay, transgender, like once in one sentence. The majority of the bill is just about hey, if you're going to talk to people's kids about really crucial things in their life, like, I, I don't know, their mental health, suicide, uh, whatever it might be, you, you have to tell the parents. You can't just get a bunch of information from this child and then or do quizzes about their mental health, their sexuality, whatever it might be, and then cut off the parents from that conversation. I think that that, that, is, that should not be a controversial bill in the least. And of course, they have a section in there that says, if the child claims they're being abused by their parents or some harm might come to them if a secret goes out to the parents, yes, that is one exception where you can keep secrets from the parents. But otherwise, the bill, the way it's been portrayed politically just blows my mind. I don't think you should have straight teachers going up to their kids and being like, hey, you know how much I effing love being straight? How much I <laughs> love having sex with my uh, male husband or my female wife? Love that. Like, I don't, I don't think that... Okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. Are you really saying that you think that when liberals teach kids about sexual orientation, they say, "You know how much I love fucking my boyfriend and sucking his fucking dick"? That's what they oh said on the lips God. of TikTok account. Fucking I saw man. it. I, I saw hyperbolic. it. The point is, I don't think that you need to have um, teachers talking so much, especially with young kids, about their sexuality. I don't, especially, this is talking about like kindergartners in this film, uh, We're talking right? about classroom instruction. I don't think the teacher comes in, and even when, in high school, when they teach, like sex ed, they're not like, so let's talk about what I like to masturbate to kids. Like, they're not talking about their own sexuality. They're talking about like, But like, this, this hey, is pre, this, this is, is pre sex ed. Yeah, like, so it would be, it would be, it would be like, it would be like, like so homosexual means you like the same sex. Heterosexual means you like the opposite sex. Transgender means blah, blah, blah. It would be that kind of inst like classroom instruction. Yeah, not like I have no problem intimate, with that. Intimate. Do you have a problem that's, with that's that? Not with the, that's not what the don't say gay bill is about. Could it be. actually it's not, is. It's, it's not, literally it's not is about, about classroom sex ed because it is applying it's, to kids before they generally get sex ed courses. It's like K to eight. It, it applies to it applies to all of the children throughout the entire school. There is a section that specifically when it talks about sex. Yeah. Well, there's a section that references K through three, but then it also says or any other age Sorry, appropriate thing too. The biggest problem with this bill and the reason why the bill is a fucking disaster is because the bill is unique in that it creates a private. Did I say something funny? That's right. Yes. Okay. 
The, the bill creates a private cause of action that allows parents to sue schools. And because of the way that the fees work in Florida, the schools oftentimes might have to share a whole bunch of the burden of any of those court cases from the parents. So what you've essentially done is, is you've created the ability for any parent in any school district and all of Florida to just start bringing lawsuits to a school because they think that their child was taught something that they shouldn't have been taught. It's a, it's a disaster. You, like you would never want to have this system. Like you create a massive chilling effect on like, should I not even teach a poet because he's gay? Should I not do the Shakespearean play because they mentioned gay? Like now, like when you're designing curriculums in schools, you're going to be yes. designing the curriculum in mind it's with like, their turn I to have live to, in fear. I ha yeah, good one. Okay. <laughs> I have to design the curriculum that's least likely to even have a chance of like some parent deciding to do some fucking crazy civil suit against my classroom. Like it's, it's a horrible idea. So is your, is your problem with the bill just the application of it in the legal the matter? The problem in the bill the is that it creates a private of cause of action for parents to sue school districts. It's, it's so it's, it's that aspect, yes. not the actual language. Of Wait, the are you okay. okay? Are you okay? If other than that, are you okay with the uh, other the, the social content of the bill? Um, it, of like, don't talk to my kids about being trans. Don't talk to my kids about being He's just trying to find something gay. to disagree with me on. First of all, no. Number one. Number two. It's yeah, it's the the question yeah. is about the bill, okay, in its totality. All right. Now, if well, you're gonna ask me, yeah, if you want to go, I, if you want to go wrote, deeper, uh, I, you're not the moderator, I, so you didn't write these. Dick did. Thank you, Dick. Okay. No, I did write the question. So, no, Dick did. He told me. Um, sorry, you're just wrong. <laughs> um, but it's no. True, so if you want to go like a step further, um, I, I mean, like the problem is it's a bit vague in what it says, and different parents are gonna have different interpretations of what it means to like appropriately teach something in class. Like I said, like is it a appropriate to mention that an author is gay you know for some teacher they might think that that's an important that's a formative thing that you know influenced the writing for some parent they might say i don't want to i don't want my kid learning about who that poet fucked my kid doesn't need to know if Oscar Wilde was doing weird shit or if Shakespeare was like, we don't need to know about that. Just teach them the material. Right. So, I mean, that's a hard. Lots of Oscar Wilde and Shakespeare and <clears throat> K through three education. Well, the, if you read the actual bill, you can do it. It's only three pages long. You can go read it if you want. Oh, um, believe the, me, I've it, read it. OK. Yeah. Well, it extends. It says age appropriate up to, I believe, high school is what it extends through. So it's not it does yeah, specify so you, K through three in you, one part. But then for the rest of it, I'm pretty sure it, it lets you bring these cause of action cases all the way up through high school. Do you, do you understand? Uh, you may not. It, it, don't take this the wrong way because I'm a lawyer. Lawyers are retarded and we have to pay a whole lot to figure out this stuff. Um, but do you understand that when they say the, the age appropriate standards set by the commissioner, that that is what what's called a catch all phrase and that the the board of Florida would have to develop those age appropriate standards that currently don't exist in regards to this topic. So there's not like. Well, we, we think it's age appropriate at six to talk about that. So so that is one of these catch all things that allows the board to actually establish some of these uh, some of these standards the, they, they can set what is age appropriate beyond K through three. But the bill itself is actually saying K through three is set aside. None of this none of this shit here. And then the the commissioner or the board, I, I can't remember the exact wording, uh, gets to set those standards under the the Florida education bill. For example, Florida has uh, standards regarding um, race discussions. When uh, black history is brought up in a Florida classroom, it is incumbent upon the curriculum to include positive stories about contributions that black people have made throughout history within the subject. So if you're talking about science, you're going to talk about people like George Washington Carver, etc. That's that's one of those age appropriate sort of uh, standards that would be set. And, and that is then required by the bill to have these age appropriate things if if the uh, the Board of Education determines them to be there. But but otherwise, it's just K through three. You can't talk about this stuff. I, I don't know how what any, anything you just said. I don't know what disagrees with anything I just said. Can, can you point out which section does or? No, I can I mean, help. I, I, I don't uh, know how you didn't catch that, but well, Nick's explain it to me. I mean, you should be able to do it, right? So you're I like, did. You, so it, all you're telling me is you're kicking the can down the road to some board that is then going to try to iron out more what is going to be appropriate or what isn't going to be appropriate. No, that like, that could that could carve out age appropriate <clears throat> things and and determine them, and that would remove them from any private cause of action. Uh, in in any sense, they could actually go. They could determine that there's an age appropriate uh, second grade curriculum for for sexual education and include that. What it's, what it's, is the if uh, removing all of the legal stuff? Then what's the difference between this bill and just ordinarily like figuring out curriculum through your state at this point? Um, 
Well, th this is a directive of, from, the, from the state legislature to control the curriculum in some way. It puts some walls around what the State Board of Education can do. That's all. And, and I, ju I just want to point out, like, creating a private cause of action got blown up, like, as, it, as if it's a big deal. But I tell you right now, it doesn't matter if you're in Florida or, oh, well, you can't say Ohio because they're working on the same bill. Let's say Florida or Montana or Nebraska or California. If you want to bring a private cause of action against your school for some sort of, uh, some sort of thing against the teacher, you can do that. And the school will also be involved because the teacher would be acting as an agent or employee of the school in the course of their duties. The school would be bearing the burden, burden in the same way. So I know it creates a private cause of action, but it more clarifies a private cause of action because one already existed. You can sue the school for whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, you could, but my guess is going to be is that a judge is going to look at that lawsuit a lot differently if there's already a bill in place establishing for these types of cases, right? If I go before a judge and I say over and over again that I want to sue the school for this bullshit or that bullshit, like at some point, like, like, I, I imagine that the case is either not going to be taken seriously, it'll be thrown out, but like it's going to be probably different, I would imagine, if the state has passed some piece of legislation, like specifically outlining where parents can take schools to court for these different types of things. Yeah, it's when a teacher engages in classroom instruction that includes uh, discussions about gender, gender identity, uh, sexuality between the ages of K through three or K through three grades. That's that's when it does that. And that's yes, it will give more validity to those specific lawsuits under those conditions. Doesn't yeah, didn't the I'm, I, OK, I don't have the text in front of you, so I'm relying on your good faith interpretation. Doesn't the, in the next sentence of that bill, doesn't it specify, doesn't it go on to say and for all children up to or through high school or whatever's included? In the book, doesn't it say that in the next sentence? I thought I don't know if anybody's a link to the bill. <laughs> Sort of, but what again, what, what that is, is a phrase allowing a board to create standards in the future. Yes, it, it, it's not kicking the can down the road. It's opening the bill to accept either standards that would say this is acceptable education before third grade, right? Like we'd say, oh, we actually like the gays. We can talk about them in second grade now. Or it's creating unacceptable education up to fifth grade where they say, well, we liked them in second grade, but we don't like the gays anymore in fifth grade. So there's no more talking there. It, it allows the board some flexibility in creating standards that go beyond the mere words of the bill. And this is really common. I mean, if you look up the, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency to, to pick an analogy here for an administrative uh, sort of state, agency the epa is created by the clean air and water act and that is just merely given the directive to make clean air and make clean water and then the administrative body and the the uh, executive branch that's in power gets the interpretive power to to implement those things to execute them right it's the same thing here they're still giving the board some leeway on how they do this but they're setting some pretty strict ground rules and some guidance for it and so yep. then any of the board's decisions would have to be within this bill but that that catch-all at the end gives them actually a whole lot of latitude if they change their minds later sure so i guess when we talk about things that exist the privilege of of the executive, these different things like the EPA or any of the organizations that exist under the executive, the executive literally does not have the ability to do like clean air and water without that executive directive, right? Whereas it seems like, don't we already have the ability to do curriculum in Florida? Like, can do we not already have a board of a state board of education that can decide like what curriculum they can enact? Like, why the additional legislation from the state? in order to do that what is the what is the purpose they're just they're they're narrowing the scope of the board's ability which of course should be the prerogative of the representative body that represents the parents who control education in the state and this is where this ultimately comes down look i'm not saying that the florida bill is is the 100 percent correct solution or the most ultimately correct solution but we do have this system where the schools the education system in this country borrows the right to educate children from parents they borrow that right they borrow that authority and then they implement it through state law that's a state by state basis as long as we we can keep the fucking feds out of it that would be great but they do this and that means that once you're an agent of the state once you're a teacher no you don't get academic freedom you get to shut the fuck up and teach what the parents are giving because they're giving their right to the state the parents have the right of education we have all sorts of uh, litigation about this we have all sorts of precedent that says parents have the fundamental right to educate their children in the way that they want so when they lend that power to the state they get to sculpt it however the shit they want 
That's why the Florida bill is wonderful, even if you disagree with the language or the ages. And, and I might disagree with Obama. some of the age ranges in there, but it doesn't matter because the people of Florida get to carve this out and they get to implement it. And all the teachers who want to bitch about it, fucking leave, start a private school, homeschool kids, start a homeschool pod, whatever you want. You can teach all of your all of your ideology there and people can voluntarily do it. But when kids are given to the state, they have to use the authority that the parents give them. And if the parents don't give them the authority, Fuck off, you don't Do we, have is it. Is it a good idea that we're establishing the precedent that like curriculum comes from like our, our state laws, that we're essentially gonna start taking votes on like how, you know, how many black people should be taught in school or how many whatever, that this is something that where like- do you, so, like, <clears throat> Where do you think curriculum comes from? My idea is, that, or my understanding is that curriculum is designed by like like whatever state education board does their stuff, but you don't typically have input from like the state legislature on the like the scope of what- is, it, is that oh, not sorry. the case? Yeah, go ahead. The state legislature creates those education boards and lays out a framework for how they will determine curriculum. Yes, that that's that's how it's been done uh, basically forever. Sure, but like, is it? It's not. Isn't it not generally the case that you're passing like state legislation to like narrow the scope of like what the education board can design for curriculum, or is that normally the case? I mean, I I don't know that it's been done in this particular way, but sure, yeah. I mean, because what. The state says, for example, and this is probably more akin to what it used to be, we want you to teach this subject, this subject, and this subject to these kids. And uh, maybe, actually, early on, it was like, and don't talk about black people. But if we've kind of changed that. Uh, the 14th Amendment changed a lot of how this works, too. But uh, this this is how it's done. The state boards of education are created by legislation from the state legislature, which is representing the people who are giving that power. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I just my, my... so true, Nick. Anyways, yeah. shut up, Stephen. I've got to go here. Bye, loser. <laughs> Leave. OK, when we talk so to... true, Nick, honestly, you're doing great here. Um, just wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> had fun. Had a good time. Thanks All for right. coming, Lauren. It, it feels you. like there is no, like... Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you leave? Don't you have video games to play? Yeah, just let me interrupt you once more. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. It feels like there's like an, the appropriate forum for parents to have um, conversations about education is, is one, relatively local, right? Like we have like our different city uh, councils or our city school boards and educators that we elect and that these things, these conversations literally happen within schools. And that seems to be like the most appropriate setting for conversations relating to curriculum or curriculum direction, like within the scope of, we should probably all learn like math, science, history, like for those conversations to happen. I guess getting like a state directive from the top down that is so, I, I guess, specific around this individual topic just seems like, it, it, especially from a conservative party that seems to be less in favor of centralized education, it just seems to be like a weird way to go about these types of conversations. Or rather, it should be left to more like the more local municipality, whether it's in your individual school or whether it's your like city or your district that's having a conversation about how education and curriculum should be designed. But again, it goes, it goes to the fundamental way in which we borrow power from the populace and give it to a, a state institution. Remember that, I mean, yes, there are school boards that are localized, and sure, there can be flexibility amongst local school boards uh, with, with parents voting on curriculum and stuff like that. Well, there can't but be now, right? No, there can be. Just, oh, yeah, oh, what's up? I, 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 I want to know what we think about this, assuming the bill is in whatever spirit it's supposed to be in, right? Like, because this is drifting into like a debate about big government, small government, who who should be making these decisions. But I I, I wrote the question because I want to know what decisions you guys think they should be making, not how they should be making them. Well, like how they're making them is kind of important, right? It's because that's kind of the process by which when we talk about laws, right? But are you okay with a, were you okay with a school? Or, or a state deciding that I think that if like if you if you go to your school meetings and all of the parents there are like hey when we're doing curriculum here like for our school we don't want this particular thing taught at this school or whatever I think that I mean they're your kids and it's your fucking government you're the one that pays the taxes with your property at the school I think that the parents ought to have the ability to say that it just it feels a little bit strange to me to create such narrow directives from a state legislative body that has to filter down all the way down through. Well, what I if guess, they like, say that you can't you can't learn about black people? Um, I mean, like, like, we can get into conversation about like protected classics, or if they say like you shouldn't learn math. Like, I mean, I'm in favor of like federal like standards that we should probably all know some level of math, reading, science, or whatever. Okay. Like, we, other people should. Talk. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm we're going back and forth. Uh, Nick, I appreciate the responses. Yeah.
Yeah, no problem. Calvin, uh, real, real quickly, the uh, uh, on the on the black subject, we have the Fourteenth Amendment, which would prevent that in okay. general. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the again, it it comes down to where you derive authority to do this. The the school boards, uh, the county boards, they don't have the authority to take from the parents. It has to come from the state. So the state makes the guidelines. And again, uh, ultimately, our system may be flawed, but it's the system that we have was designed so that the states were the petri dishes, not the counties. And and if you don't like it, you can either you will always have the right to educate your children so long as so long as some conservatives get to have any sort of say and, and have a couple good lawyers laying around. But uh, you can always pull your children out and homeschool them. You can always take your children to a private school. And in my wonderful world, you would actually have a uh, school choice and the state would fund your ability to do that in the way that they do with public schools. And we could eliminate this problem in, entirely. Build yeah. your own school, right, Nick? Exactly. Uh, with the government money. Calvin. You're libertarians. You can never pin them down. Calvin, you've joined the conversation. Can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Little loud. All right. So, uh, yeah, the only person. You're, wait, you're, you're slightly too loud. Is that. You said slightly, uh, but he really means you're absolutely fucking too loud. Way too I turn, loud. I turn it down. Is it better? Yeah. 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 All right, cool. Yeah, so, um, hi, everyone. I think the only person I've talked to, like, face to face here, Boris Buck. What's up, Buck? Hey, kiddo. How's What's it going, going on? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I just saw your invite to join. I started watching, I was, like, pretty busy with school today, but, um, I wanted to join in, like, you know, I saw Buck was really the only, I'm, I mean, I haven't talked to most of you, but Buck was the only other trans person here, and I felt like you're having a trans soul. You're having a panel of canceled trans people. Um, <laughs> I'm the guy to talk to, so. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. How did you get transled, Calvin? Um, oh god. You want a list? <laughs> Obama. Like, honestly, most of it was like just for cringy, like anti SJW videos I made when I was like 17, 18, where I said people couldn't identify, it didn't make sense for people to, to identify as autism gender. And like, there was some other, there's some legitimate stuff. I stopped making videos kind of a minute ago, but I do like from time to time hop in, um, like on my channel and do like lives and stuff. I don't know. Namely, um, oh god, no, I don't know if I can j name drop certain people. They're just, trans creator who's a trans woman she just says crazy things never had one good take she says crazy things all the time. her name is demon mama but you know we know her we love her absolutely <laughs> fucking base i don't know I'm who just, fuck you I'm are but scared. i'm scared you're of her. hell I don't yeah know, i don't know if she will um i don't know if she'll be summoned by just her name but um that's she just said some crazy you. things about like self-diagnosis and i'm like for anyone who doesn't know, I mean, maybe people haven't kept up with me since I stopped making YouTube videos, but I'm in college and I'm like, pretty much I'm dual enrolled in, in undergrad and, and my master's right now. I'm getting my degree in applied counseling. So um, I, with mental health, like self-diagnosis, have like a lot of opinions on that. And I did not like her opinions. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Mr. Girl, I'm going to throw this one to you. This is uh, the next question. Uh, feel free to jump in, Calvin. Uh, this, the specter of suicide looms over discussions about trans people's access to hormones and surgeries, including teenagers. Um, Mr. G Girl, you compared this aspect of trans activism to a romantic partner threatening suicide in an abusive relationship. Uh, is this specter of suicide a manipulation tactic or is it important to raise awareness of suicidality in trans populations it's a manipulation tactic <laughs> I think so uh, yes i think that uh it's well one thing is talking about suicidality tends to increase suicidality which is um so when you're raising awareness about it you're also making it worse which makes it kind of tricky to talk about and like even in this panel i want to be sort of like uh, hopefully careful with how we address it um but I do, yeah, I, I think that a lot of, like, um, thought trees end at, well, if you don't do this, you know, these people or these kids will kill themselves. And it, it, and, uh, it, and then that turns into, like, straw man arguments where you're like, if, you, if you're arguing against this or if you're questioning it even, if you're not willing to accept this new truth or new reality, you are killing people or you're complicit in murdering them. And um, 
yeah, I do think it's manipulative. And if if what you're saying is true, like it, it basically boils the whole uh, the whole like ideology and um, advocacy down to like these people will be really, 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 really upset if you don't do what they want. And like for us to sign on wholesale on uh, changing our definitions of what women and what men are and what is appropriate for kids to be taught or medications to take and surgeries, I think that it should stand up on its own without the um, the fear of of uh, yeah of death if you don't go along with it. I think your oh, point, I, your point about it being used as a straw man is true. Like that is a true yeah. thing that the trans that trans people do. They will use that. Like, but I do think that it's important to not understate like the fact that there is a a pretty high suicide um, attempt rate for trans people. And so you kind of have to walk this line between like, okay, let's address that this is a thing, and that there there is like a high percent of trans people who are trying to kill themselves, and that's why we need to give them access to transition, and to like you know discuss trans people and like you know understand that it's like a real thing but at the same time i do think that like there are trans people who will abuse I, that there is 100 so percent trans people who do that i have read on boards where kids tell other kids if you just tell your parents you're going to kill them yourself that i've actually read it so this is what you need to tell your parents so you can start to wear yeah, a binder yeah, or you can start to that, yeah. so they are actually speaking to them you know within the community about how to do that there's definitely a high rate of suicidal tendencies but I do not think that there is a high rate of actual suicide. So I think that it's kind mm -hmm. of like m messes with people's understanding of what that means. They might, you know, it comes off as we're all killing ourselves. That That's not true. We yeah, definitely that's... have a high rate of suicidal uh, ideation, most definitely. But I also think it's manipulative and it can become manipulative. If you don't give me my hormones, I'm gonna kill myself. Or you don't let me take, you know, get my binder, I'm gonna kill myself. That That's an actual manipulation towards parents and they're being, they're being taught that. I also I also just don't uh, I think I don't agree with um, part of that Calvin where you're saying um, like uh, like anorexia as far as I know is the disorder with the highest death rate out of all psychological disorders and that that doesn't mean we should give anorexics what they want but anorexia and dysphoria are different in the sense that anorexia like they're very these are you can't really make a parallel between those two i think things. they're the same but they're not i'm not even making a parallel i think they're the, literally the same okay so can you like explain why how you think they're the same because like i think if they were the same thing the literature and the, and the dsm would have those two things be the same thing they're not they haven't caught up to i Mr. disagree Girl with yet. that statement they, yeah they're behind no you're right destiny by about a hundred years uh, the they're the same in the sense that you look in the mirror, you can't stand what you see, and you want to Keep like hating your life then it. working class and really, the, really, really, people, really badly. People conflate the people people mix up gender dysphoria and body dysmorphia a lot. Body yeah, dysmorphia, I, think, I think they're the same, but they're not they're, because I, body dysmorphia is when you look in the mirror and you're delusional. You're seeing something that's not there. Like if I were to look in the mirror and think I looked morbidly obese, right, like 300 pounds, right, and I mm -hmm. genuinely see that in the mirror, that's body dysmorphia. Gender okay. dysphoria is like the, it's it's strange because it's the complete opposite it's like pre-transition you look in the mirror and you see what's actually there you're not delusional you're not seeing something that's not actually there but it's not right it's like you're looking I get, in the mirror. I, I understand that the, some of the mechanisms by how they're experienced are different but ultimately i think someone's looking in the mirror they're really unhappy with what they see and they want to do something to make themselves happy with what they see and so when, when we have an anorexic an anorexic 15 year old we say, I, yeah, we know you want to do this and you're going to be really, really unhappy if you don't. But like you can't like you, you have to find other ways to accept your body or cope with this or, or whatever. And but you can um, treat anorexia. You can overcome anorexia with gender dysphoria. The research literature shows like, like ch gender transition is the most effective way of overcoming gender dysphoria. Yeah, if there was a way to surgically make somebody look like they're 80 pounds that, that, without harming them or killing them, that that would probably help with anorexia too. But um, I guess I, I don't think, think the that issue would is be Calvin desirable. is saying is that that wouldn't help because even girls have known anorexic people, um, two of them, even girls that are anorexic, there is no surgery that will help them because they always feel like they're overweight. Like they'll be like 80 pounds, like e five, no, seven, yes. looking in yeah. there yeah. like, oh God, like I'm so, so, so to me, that, Where there is that, no, there is no like, Eating dysphor there is no eating dysphoria like euphoria where it's like oh my god my body looks so good whereas for trans people 
ideally, if they've gotten like a, a good enough surgery and they mm -hmm. pass, they do look in the mirror like, oh my God, I actually feel like I look like what I feel like. Mm -hmm. like I, I guess I just see the whole, uh, the trans advocacy movement as a whole as this compulsive, never satisfied, always digging, always, always wanting more but more that's not all trans people. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not all trans people. It's not all anorexic people too. Like there are there are people who really do just want to lose weight and be really skinny, not to the point where they're. But like, we know they're not the anorexic, ideology. Right? There's a the True, ideology yeah, guess... of gender dysphoria is we don't really fully know what the ideology of it is. Whereas with anorexia, they have there's a lot more like understanding of what the ideology of that is, and there's like documented treatment of it, like without and like like to like in therapy. Like you go to therapy, you can't like you can't. Like conversion therapy, talk therapy doesn't work for trans people. Whereas over time, I mean, and, and I don't, I just don't believe I don't that. think it works for anorexic people either. You it just don't work for fucking anybody. anybody. Okay. All the talk therapy respect? does is make you like anorexia is one of the how... hardest. I will say, I'll concede this anorexia is one of the like statistically one of the most difficult disorders. It's like the most pervasive. Like it, it's hard to treat, but it can be treated. People can Look, overcome. I just... My point Maybe. is that if you take if you take a person who has a disorder, normally they don't decide their own course of treatment. Usually they're like, I, the, all, everyone with a disorder wants something that is like weird and different from what most people want. They usually want to do something that looks insane to the rest of us. And most of those disorders, we respond by saying, hey, you know, we love you, but you can't do that. Just to but stop. What about someone, especially but, if you're a kid. But with trans people, when someone has dysphoria, we say, "What? What do you? What, what do you want? Like, what? What do you want on the like pharmacy shopping list? We'll give you anything you want. We'll do anything you, we can do to make you feel comfortable in your body." Whereas, like with you know, the, every other teenager, we just say, "Like, yeah, you have to be uncomfortable." But they don't have to be uncomfortable. uncomfortable. We have surgery. Yeah, I, I they don't have to be. Like, for context, I, I transitioned at 15. Like I socially yeah. transitioned at 15. I started T at 16. I got top surgery at 17. There has not been one second of my life. I'm 21 now. There's not been one second of my life where I ever regretted it, never thought back to anything. Oh, well, I, if you're I, already 21, then you, you fucking know everything, don't you? Listen, <laughs> no, I, I don't no, want to no, get, I, I don't want to argue. I don't want to argue with you about your own medical decisions no, in your life. No, okay? you're right. You do, you do. But I do. try to be accountable and introspect a lot. This is something I introspect respect about a lot and keep myself accountable and i okay. obviously i'm here you know i'm not trying to argue yeah. i'm, I'm argue with him calvin he's literally I saying you shouldn't I, exist I, that's what he's saying if mr girl had it his way you wouldn't be allowed because mr <laughs> girl doesn't believe in any sort of medical transitioning before the age of 18 he doesn't believe in any people and anything like that that's true i guess why, i don't believe in anything why do you believe that if it were but why if it if there's people like me who it works for and i'm not the only person like why and there's you know why it worked for me i transitioned 30 years ago it and, worked for me yeah so. i don't believe anything works for anybody well oh. i mean okay so, so I'm, 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 not here, I'm not sitting here saying like oh i have like my life the is word great you just got mr girl like, oh everything, shit everything, everything life sucks i've nick was right on that and it's all a mess and nothing works you're gonna regret you're gonna regret it and if you didn't yeah. transition if you didn't transition you'd regret that too on my you're, gonna, right. you're, gonna, you're gonna regret your whole on fucking my life. deathbed on my on my deathbed i will remember i swear to you mr girl i will <laughs> if i'm 80 Good. years old i will say mr girl i didn't regret it that will be my Good. final word. I want my smug face to be the last thing that goes through your mind before my you mind out of existence I'm, forever yeah <laughs> So life sucks. Is that the? Life, is life that, doesn't have to suck. Well, You're being nihilistic. Life true. doesn't have to No, suck. no, I don't think it's nihilistic to just say like, like, yeah, we all wish our bodies were different, and I don't, I don't know. Why not let people? We, here's my thing: is like, if it, if it, okay, if do, it do, works. Do you do you think it would be weird if every high school boy started taking steroids to be more muscular so they could look like more like Captain yeah. America? That would be weird. Like, like that would be weird, right? And I mean, it's not necessary. Why not? Because what if they really not, want? Like, to? What they if don't... they're gonna? What if they're gonna kill themselves if they don't kill? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, and they literally do. And they literally do. To be honest with you, the thing is that if so, if there's a high school boy who's gonna kill himself if he doesn't take steroids, there's a under there's an underlying issue with probably when it comes to like body dysmorphia again because men struggle with body dysmorphia too. Right, and, and but you want you want to define again, trans within you want to the, define gender the psychological as a, literature as, body dysphoria can. Yeah, I, I I will burn that literature. You want to take? Pull it up you want to take? You, you, I don't I don't fucking care. You want to take gender dysphoria and define it as a bedrock psychological issue that there is nothing underneath. 
there's nothing to treat or even to look at. We can't like lift it up and peek. Oh, I think we should. Oh no, there's definitely something. Okay, 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 okay. But when it comes to it, but when I describe a high school boy wanting to look like Captain America, then all of a sudden your mind fills with explanations of why that might be and how looking like Captain America, while very satisfying, even up until maybe even all the way to his deathbed, might not actually be the ideal solution. And that maybe the ideal solution is is a societal shift, shifting in the family shifting within himself of, of accepting where he's at so it's so like yes yeah, some people are going to want it so badly that they get, get the fake boobs they do the testosterone mm-hmm. they whatever they they buy that expensive sports car that they want during their midlife crisis or whatever some two people take the leap but i think what w- w- maybe we can all agree is that progressives are moving that gap to help you leap over it and making it smaller and easier and younger Mm-hmm. Well, and, I think that first of all, That's transitioning right. is a decision that shouldn't be taken lightly. All these fucking people, That's became, right. all these, but listen to me. Right. This is where me and you differ, Buck, though, because we're, I, I, the thing is, <laughs> we <laughs> okay, do. Let me, let we do. But, you know, but we both can see the importance in it. And so, like, let me just, like, get. You have to re- realize we come from different generations. I yeah. have a different way of thinking. I have a different way of being. I have a different idea of why transition and what transition is about. I have a whole different idea of it than the younger generation. And that's why Kelvin and I are totally buddies, but we just have diff- different, we have disagreements, which is awesome. And I, I love that we can have this conversation as trans people. This is what people need to see. We have totally different ideas, but we still can be friends around it and understand My opinion it. is but that, if- like you guys are saying like, okay, you're coming to the conclusion, okay, well, there's all these like, you know, issues with medical transition and stuff. So we should just like, we should bar it. Like we should just not have kids transition. We should just, you know, but I think that the solution is more like, let's, Let's go back to kind of how it was with like where we're let's focus on the mental health aspect because there there are different That's like right. there are different groups of trans people. There are trans people who will benefit from medical transition yes. and they there is no way to convert them. I don't care what you say, Mr. Girl. There are trans people where I'm not it, saying you no 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 I'm, no, I'm no, saying you, convert you're, convert you're, them to being miserable. Like no no no, me. you're saying convert <laughs> them to accepting that they're not going to have the body they want. They're not going to have the life they That's want. Right. They're going to look in the mirror every day and feel some some a distant sadness. But or maybe why like, should I have cute, to live like that. You because know what I mean? That's, because that's fucking life. Type but 1 diabetes <laughs> is life. Like, I don't know but what I was able to live like this, like, and I'm so much happier. Auto, there are autoimmune yeah. diseases that are life. Like, if we can alleviate something medically, why would we not? We would never I guess I just this. don't. I, I guess I just don't. I don't believe that it is medicated. Yeah, okay, I don't, so I don't, believe, it is, I don't okay. believe it is actually alleviated. So, yes, that's that the is. thing. So, you need to be more clear because yes. you make it sound like you're agreeing when in reality, you just don't think that trans people are like a real thing. You think that it's just like a mind fuck thing that they can get over or just accept and deal with. But it's not like a unique thing to trans people. It's just like part of yeah, the human Yeah, but that's not specific shitty. to trans people. I don't believe that any of these things are like a real, like an autoimmune disease, that's a real thing for sure. And the trans advocacy is to try to make us think of a psychological state or disorder, depending on who you ask, into a similar thing. So I think I, yeah, I do. That's why I'm listing other like psychiatric or psychological conditions because I see it as similar to that, not similar to diabetes. But see, the the problem with this is that the the trans issue, and I think this is kind of what you're getting at, Mr. Girl. Uh, the trans issue is a sacred cow. Um, it is unassailable. It is set aside. It is somehow different. And and then when you when you mention that, yeah, you know, I I'm not really sure how it's different. Um, the onus was instantly put on you to prove that it wasn't different rather than rather than any evidence that it is. And and I mean, we treat it differently. Sure. But I don't I haven't ever seen any reasoning as to why it's treated differently other than well, it's in the DSM. So a bunch of people got together and decided it was different. But I mean, uh, I, I, I fall in line with what you're saying that that this is an issue that is akin to these other issues and these other issues aren't treatable with, or we, we don't deem it socially acceptable to treat these other issues with surgery or hormones or anything else. There's a super chat from Cynthia, my favorite liberal who, uh, who said that, uh, you know, her 14 year old is, uh, in volleyball and wants to take hormones to get taller. Um, why, why aren't we allowing this stuff? Why, Mm. why don't we have these things, uh, for kids? And, and I think it's because we, we, are concerned with the decisions that we're allowing children to make when we don't make, we don't allow them to make other decisions. I mean, if, if you said, look, there are some kids who are really, really poor and the best thing to do would be to give them a credit card so they could buy food. I think that we, we go, wait, but we don't give kids credit cards. 
And it's like, well, why not? Well, they're not capable of making appropriate financial decisions. I mean, I would rather deal with debt than long-term medical issues. So I, mm-hmm. to me, I, this is this is where I'm seeing the problem. This is a sacred cow issue, and that's kind of the whole theme of the night, right? Transal culture is this is the sacred cow. I think that yes, there are I, some... That, yeah. I, Okay. I think that there are some issues where there are some things where we accept that like this is like a baseline thing that we ought to be able to live with. Like we have some base expectation of, of what people should have to deal with and, and like the, the I guess the privileges or the existence that should that ought to be afforded to some people. Um, if some kid came up to you and he was like, listen, my life is miserable. I really need like the newest, hottest Nikes or Yeezys or whatever. We would look at that kid and we would go, you know what? Like, I don't think in society that you should be guaranteed the right to have your favorite pair of Yeezys or to um, the whatever the lady's daughter's name. Like, you don't need to be guaranteed the right to be a certain height to play volleyball. Like, I think that you can exist in society and be just fine without being guaranteed. But if a kid was like, hey, like, I go to school and I get lunch there. When I go home, like, I can't eat because my parents can't afford food. Food is probably something that we should provide people. Like, so at some level, there's going to be some subjectivity to what we decide you have to live with. But when it comes to something like gender dysphoria, if we do have the ability, do I smell to, communism? To I do absolutely nothing. I said had anything to do with communism. Um, <laughs> like if what? You, if you have a <laughs> JD. I'm sure you, you must have taken at least one poli sci class or something. Okay, so oh yeah, well no, we should just give people food all the time, right? Like that's that makes sense. We that we do that in the United States. And then probably water. Right? We do that in the United States. Every single in every single developed country in the world, this is what is done. Yes, we do not let people starve on the street traditionally. I'm sorry if that upsets you, but yeah, we've made that decision to decide that people probably should be starving to death. Um, <laughs> Wait, that yeah, happens when it comes, in LA still, when it comes to um, yeah. yeah, in LA they choose it. Okay, those people are amazing. fucking crazy. Okay, there's a reason I left that god for second city. Um, but when it comes to things like gender dysphoria, if there is a way to alleviate it medically, we do have processes for it. It just seems a little bit unnecessarily cruel to be like, no, you're gonna have to just go ahead and live with this. Like, I think having the right to live as the gender that you see yourself as, and to not have that incongruence that it doesn't seem like people choose. It's not just some shit that you're just like, man, fuck, I want to be fucking trans today because suicide sounds awesome. Um, it seems like you you probably should have the right to make these decisions and medically transition should you have the ability to do so when we do have the technology to do so when you turn 18 but, yep. but then it's too late there's no point in it's not I'm too late, too late. It, that's not too it, late it, absolutely no. people transition stop hold on too. you're buck you're driving me crazy if for women that have for trans women that have male puberties you're looking yes. at potentially over $100,000 more in cost, which to a lot of people, um, you know, you, you brought up earlier that people use that insult, passing privilege. A lot of that is because people feel like passing is gate kept behind money, right? FFS is incredibly no, expensive. Yeah, absolutely. That's not why. Well, that, well that's, that's, that's one of the reasons why is because it is like, right, go ahead. So, so first off, <laughs> I don't necessarily think that's true. But that being said, a lot of people transition later in age and are perfectly okay with it and have a great, awesome life like me. So I don't necessarily think you ne- you have to transition at an early age in order to be able to just live your life beautifully. Yeah, it's a struggle. Yeah, a lot of people struggle, but also a struggle a bad thing. I don't necessarily think so. But it depends. that being said, you have to remember we are not monolithic. We are I agree, all I agree with that. People. I agree the with that. We come to it. Some people don't realize they're trans until a later age. Sure. And then if they don't, that's go- great. But like, mm-hmm. but you, if I saw you, I would, I would just instantly assume you're a man. I would no mm-hmm. question about it. Thank but you. there are a lot of trans women that don't have that same. But you privilege. keep going back to trans women. Well, because not tra- trans because men. because trans men typically like you can get away with looking a bit more effeminate in society, and people aren't going to call you a woman. Nobody like it's just not typically a thing. Whereas even Lauren here earlier was saying like sometimes people accuse her of being a man. I think that when it comes to puberty, I think that like the female puberty is generally a bit easier to transition from female to male if you've gone through it. But if you've no. gone through, I. It's not true. When it we, comes we to it's easier, it's easier to add when, it to to passing, when it comes to externally passing, when it comes to externally passing, I think that trans men can have a much easier time passing than trans women generally. Mm-hmm. Maybe not every time, right? And for for evidence mm-hmm. of that, facial masculinization surgery is like a, I think like five thousand dollars, and then the female version is like fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, right? It's like ten times more because there's so much work. So I think that in general, that's this is why I keep going back to trans women. I'm not saying fuck trans men, we exclude trans men, but it's easier mm-hmm. if you go through puberty as a woman, it's easier mm-hmm. post puberty transition to 
to looking like a band versus um, it's just a different women. it's just a different thing we have to deal with than what trans women are. now i understand your your analogy there of having to have big shoulders and all of those things but i still know tons of trans women who have dealt with it and have been perfectly okay with it and said that they are okay that they didn't have puberty blockers so my That's experience great for them. To be but like my almost every trans person would say if given the chance they would have transitioned younger if they could have almost everyone that's not necessarily okay, true because I think person... some people didn't actually understand what was going on with them at that age and then realized at a later age. But that being said, again, we're all different and all that's why we can't. Ha it's so hard to have this conversation because we, we're always put in this little like sort of zone that we're all exactly the same. And some people don't even want to transition to look like how I look anymore. They just want to be trans and not necessarily a pass as a man or a woman. I think we all agree those people suck, right? Everybody on this panel. <laughs> yeah. Everybody on this panel fucking hates those people, okay? The, yeah. I can't, no, Destiny, I can't say that kind of stuff Okay, anymore. maybe you don't, but <laughs> yeah, fuck those people. Trouble. I can. <laughs> No, it's um, good, I just want to say for the record, a different space. We we really need to recognize that. Like, come to I don't understand why the conclusion has to be though. Like, let's stop people under 18 all people under 18 from transitioning and not okay well let's be get way more like concise with like the mental health procedures and the therapy and like ways mm -hmm. that we can be affirmative and say okay let's have therapists that are respectful of people's identities and don't like you know try to convert do conversion therapy but also try to explore like what else could be That's going right. on before like i when i got when i started t at 16 I went to therapy for a year. I, well, I lived as male for a year beforehand, and I went to therapy for six months. And if I, if I, like, I urge every trans person I ever Keep meet hating to your life then. Working live class, socially Andy. transition for a year and go to therapy for at least six months and go to a therapist who's not just going to, like, affirm, affirm, affirm and not think about other things. But my therapist always called me he, always called me Calvin, but she talked with me about everything in my life to make sure not only that, like, I wouldn't regret it later, but to make me feel more confident in the decision and my parents to feel more confident. Like my parents talked to her. We had the whole family come in. Like it was a whole thing and that's not required, but it should be. So why don't we focus because you would have way less people passing through the system and detransitioning and all these problems. If we focus on the mental health care instead of just banning all kids from transitioning. That's right, okay, but that's the problem. We're pushing people through too fast. You can get hormones in five minutes on the internet now. Like, how is that even possible? How are we a, not implementing that? I have a question from, from chat. <laughs> how does a therapist figure out if a complete transition is appropriate for an individual? Okay, so there's, well, there's diagnostic criteria for gender dysphoria. So obviously you you touch on that criteria as in the DSM. Mm -hmm. And also oftentimes... Wait a second, I, I, I'm, I think the question is more how should... How should? I think... Figure out. Not well, how I, does, how I should. I think that you should, I think that there should be like just discussions about like what your goals are. Why do you want to transition? How are you feeling? Like if you were in a, if because here's the thing for me, my transition was never about... It was about how other people view me, but it's also not like if I I truly believe that if I was on a deserted island in the middle of the ocean, I would have still felt uncomfortable. I still, still wanted to transition. It's not when I'm thinking about getting bottom surgery and stuff, right? It's not for other people. It's not for sexual purposes. Of course, that's nice. But for me with bottom surgery, it's like more about like, I don't have to shower in the dark anymore. That's an awful fucking thing to shower in the dark because and it's not, you know, I'm not this. I'm not I don't have like body image issues in the way body dysphoria is. It's literally it's not a delusional type of thing the way body dysphoria is. It's just that you see something that's not there and it should be. And it's not. And like the, the way that you would like, and again, I'm, it, it's like so complex how you would do an evaluation. And again, it takes months and months and months of talking to a client. But I think that like the answer is to focus on, okay, let's have conversations about what are the questions we should ask? What are the best, most effective ways? And not just like, in my opinion, in your opinion, but like, let's do some research, some psychological research and look to the literature on effectiveness and stuff, because it is documented. And I feel like that is the best way, like empirical evidence. That is the also, best way. Also, it's individual. You have to understand, again, it's individual. So this doc, doctor is dealing with this patient, and that's in an individual space. And I do think that we can, again, say, well, how can a doctor diagnose a person with gender? No, you have to understand each individual is different and that doctor is going to come to different ideas and different understanding of that person and make that choice but i think ultimately it comes up to the person to make that final decision 
even like everyone even... is different but buck i'm gonna be honest like i feel mm. like the underlying mechanism of my dysphoria and your dysphoria there's probably a similar like whatever the root yes. of it is we still don't know me and you are the same transition we don't regret yes. it and we here we are now we would never go back no. for trans people like me and you there has to be some sort of underlying mechanism yeah, i agree and there and there would be a way to diagnose that there should be a way to, and there kind of is or it's not perfect there is but they, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I have a gender dysphoria diagnosis. There's ways to like, you know, to do that. There is like some sort of like, everyone's different in their own way, but in, in yeah. other ways, there is this disorder that we know exists and we see That's it in right. different people. Yeah. I guess like the question comes down to like, if, if and this is weird because Mr. Girl and um, Nick kind of have, it's hard to tell if you guys think that trans people are like a real phenomenon at all. If you no, do think, not really. Okay. I don't. Okay. No, I'm not in the, in the, in the, in the, no, no, wait, wait. I just, well, I just want to say, I just want to say, because we're having these conversations right now. Like, we're having an argument with Mr. Girl. Like, how do we figure out if they're trans or they're trans? But he doesn't even believe that trans is like truly a concept. So that, that mm -hmm. discussion is like worthless, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you do. What? I believe that trans. What do you mean? But like, how could you say that? Like, how could you say that when like me and Buck are standing right in front of you telling you that's not the case? And like, all of the evidence and empirical, uh, psychological literature, it all it, it disagrees with you. Like, you can, Wait, you, you can say. Do you, do you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? I, I, I don't. But like, okay, 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 okay. But, but wait, but wait, Nick, do, do you? Like, you can. Yeah. Okay, but Nick's right here, guys. He's right here in front of Yeah, but of Jesus you. isn't here. That's the difference. Jesus isn't it. That's, yeah. With, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, but, but when it comes to that, like, Jesus, you, you have I'm a belief neutral. system. You have a belief There's system. There's as much proof about... that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior as I'm, much as I'm, there is proof that he's not. With trans uh, whatever. people, you can't, you can't, you're not going to change my opinion. No proof about, that he's not. You're not gonna. You're not gonna change my like. That's view a negative. That's weird. By yelling at me right now. Listen, <laughs> if there was my, ever a place point, where Jesus wasn't, it would be not in this conversation. <laughs> my, my, my point. My point. Anywhere is two that, or more are gathered, even trans. Point, he said it. So, so to me, transness is kind of or gender ideology is kind of like a religion. It's a way of thinking about things. That what? I, yeah, <laughs> it's not, that, it's a, it's not. well, I know that's fine. I understand that you believe it is the literal truth. I and mean, I'm using I'm using Nick Wait, as an you, example. So I'm, so, opinion, I'm using but... Nick as an example. Wait, hang on. I'm using Nick as an example of somebody who believes in a different truth from you. You can see him sitting there. You can see that he doesn't believe the world is the way you think it is, and and you think the world is the way he doesn't think it is. And yet we're all still in the same room talking to each other. That's right. Okay, so let me make my point real quick. Let me just say what I'm saying. With Jesus, okay. it's not that I like, it's not that Jesus isn't my Lord and Savior, right? When I, I'm just going to go with religion. And, and like, a, So wait, Nick, so I'm, I'm assuming you're religious? Sorry. Yeah, sure. You're, you're, are, <laughs> sure. I'm the best Christian there ever was. You're, well, let's say, let's take someone who, like, like I... I would I would say that I'm just like kind of neutral on religion. I can't disprove it and I can't prove it equal amounts. Like there's no proof that God is real. There is no way for me to say that it is for certain. Like you know what okay, I mean? So I'm you're neutral. E you're equally Muslim, Jewish. Well, Christian. I mean I can't. You're there's no there's no way to prove it. There's no way to study it. There's no empirical like way to. Okay, so yeah, so if somebody walks up to you in the street and they say, "Are you Muslim?" You're like, "I don't know." <laughs> I would probably just say like I can't I answer that because I don't have proof. I, I would say no. I no because i'm not like i just not i'm not any religion you know what i mean yes just... i do i am also not religious so i get yeah. I know just what you mean but th so that's how i feel when people are like so do you believe that you have like a gender inside you that like could maybe not match up with your body I'm i mean like, you no, can have your I opinion don't... and what i mean but like yes. all of the there's i was supposed to get actual research and empirical evidence that goes against that like you know what i mean so like everybody can have no empirical I means here I'm but sorry. But I might honestly, be... but honestly, it doesn't even matter. To be honest, with you. I don't really care if that's how you feel about it. And I actually respect that you feel that way, and it's totally okay. It's not going to make or break me. And that's what I think people need to stop being so. I sensitive don't though, because about this stuff. is the problem. No, you're not sensitive. You're not sensitive. I'm just saying, in general, the trans community gets so weird when people don't accept us. It's like, so what? Guess well, what? The, so what? Because the rejection no, but means like outlawing drugs and care trans and stuff for trans people. Trans people require support. <laughs> trans people require support. Buck, if people didn't support you, Buck, you wouldn't have ever been able to transition. There I transitioned when there was nobody supporting me, my friend. You so had to. You had to have. A but I had to. So those are Wait, but I, I, I think it. I think Stephen's making a good point where he's saying that it's not there. There is a there's two different issues. There's one. Do you believe in it enough to yeah. support me with what I want or need for myself or my advocacy or at least mm -hmm. to leave me alone? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, do you believe in it enough to pledge that you believe in it? And I feel like mm -hmm. that this one is the one I'm more concerned about, where I feel like I'm I'm being asked to pledge that I agree with this narrative and if I don't pledge it 
um, and, and even if I'm quiet about it, if I don't put mm. pronouns in my bio or whatever, right. increasingly I'm in danger. And but that's what I get upset about. I get, I'm very upset about that bio. because I don't think that it should be that way. I think you should have every right to think how you want to think. And that just should not affect me in any way, shape or form. So I do have a problem with that. And I don't think you need to accept it and be okay with it if you're not. And it doesn't, it shouldn't bother us as trans people. We should be like, okay, cool. You don't get it. We're going to take care of ourselves and we're going to move forward. But, here but I, think, I think there has to be varying <laughs> levels of what acceptance means. Right, well, yeah, I'm, at, I'm, I'm speaking specifically about him, right? So, of course, in the whole world, we all, we have to educate the world to say we are here. Now, you don't have to necessarily agree with it, but what you do need to do is open up a little space for us. And that's what we need to understand. That's called coexisting. But that that I do not in any way, shape or form feel like I have to change your mind in order for me to live this life. I feel like I respect that you don't agree with my choice, but I think we can sit here and have a conversation and maybe even have a beer. It doesn't really even matter. That's where I stand. I don't drink, yeah. fuck, but I would, <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I, would, I, I. I would have some peanuts with you. Though. I, uh, I, I, I feel like it might be important to delineate something here because uh, I think I'm getting put into this fun box, which is great and all, but my ultimate position is I don't care what you do as an adult to yourself like i i could give a shit less if if transgenderism is real or not real it does it's it's irrelevant i don't care if you're muslim i don't care what like you pick whatever maybe you're an ice cream fetishist and you like to bathe in in some wonderful vanilla it doesn't matter to me what matters to me is the moment we start putting kids in an institution in which they cannot escape and then we uh, we have someone agendizing something. I don't care what it is. And and for anyone, let me head off the argument that well, parents can indoctrinate children too. Yes, uh, a parent indoctrinating a child to anything will always be one hundred percent less effective, less offensive than the state indoctrinating the kid to the same thing that the parent would. And so as long as that's there, that's where I have problems. Like uh, I. As as far as whether or not like a trans is a real thing, I, th I think we're getting off into the weeds on like uh, empirical evidence and stuff like that. When I, I think largely it's it's completely irrelevant if we just take the approach of, you know, once once you are outside of the protection of the state, then uh, as as like a you know sub eighteen year old person, which is what we've decided, then you do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. But as long as we're going to have the, the state here, then people get to have input on the rules on what the state is going to do to yeah. protect its future citizenry. And I, I'm really concerned about a state that that has uh, any sort of program that could potentially be causing significant harm to its future citizenry, especially when we go outside the protections of the parental unit by by passing uh, quote unquote affirming legislation that is less about affirming and more about concealing. Like, yeah. but I, again, I think, I think, I think, um, whether it's a real thing that comes into play when you're talking about what you're teaching in school. So like evolution, we teach in school. And so for that Not to my work, school. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> for that to work, we have to have religious people uh, kind of concede like the world was created in seven days, but like not scientifically or not like literally that's not like the actual truth we're going to teach in school we're not going to say that's like we're not going to attack it and you can have church and you can have a separate space for that and so i think what's ken ham is calling me right now he's super pissed i don't know who that is that's the guy who built that ark the creation museum oh sorry um, religious joke just got wrecked by a bunch of fucking atheist heathens <laughs> wait did you say wait wait what name did you say ken ham Oh, there's another guy called Kent Hovind, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's, I've debated he, that guy before. He's, he's like a six thousand year old Earth, like flat Earth creationist or some shit. Like, didn't? Oh, yeah, they call him the Dino associate. Doctor. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Yeah, F friendly dude. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Girl. So, so we're trying to figure out: Are we going to teach uh, this gender ideology, trans ideology, from my point of view, or from Calvin's point of view? It's just science, and so we do have to figure out, like. You have to indoctrinate kids with something. That's the thing. It's like when you teach kids something, you're indoctrinating them to believe one thing or another. And so I, I feel like we haven't really figured out how to all agree on this. And then we could split up state by state. But like, um, that's weird, too. I mean, I don't think it needs to be like taught. Like you could just meant like, I think that there could just be like, yeah, OK, trans people are a thing. They exist. And like, I don't I don't know. There was never well, that, a time that already that's that already like really controversial to some people, right? 
Yeah, I don't. I don't believe that. Well, that's, but yeah. there are trans well, you know, people where, that exist. Where does it even come in? Like, well, what, I believe what trans people exist in, the way in, Christians. Like, if it's uh, if, if it's just mentioned in passing, like in school, I don't think that should be a problem. If it's just like, like you're like walking mentioned. down the hallway and the teacher whispers, you like. No, like if you're in class, <laughs> there's trans people. <laughs> if you're in <laughs> class, like if you're in, like if you're in like I don't know, if you're in like a health well, class, okay. Like it could but when come you say off. trans people exist, you're saying <laughs> trans people exist and they're right. Right. So yeah. if you say yeah. if you say Christians exist, I mean, it's yeah. like yes, yes, Christians exist. Trans yeah. people, yes, people I believe, believe all the people, people believe all are, believe all kinds of different things. I believe but, trans but people are saying, right in the sense that like like transitioning is the uh, most effective proven method for for treating gender dysphoria. I mean, that's the, the what like conversion therapy doesn't work. I don't know what you're proposing. Like, there's like he's I'm proposing, not, I'm just think proposing not just, to talk about you it. You just at live with it. It's a it's a it's a no no. I'm yeah. fine with teaching about gender dysphoria uh -huh. and like some people transition and, and that works for them sometimes uh -huh. or maybe or we don't. Uh, here's the studies. Here's the like that's different from your gender is like a soul. Oh right, yeah. And I, your gender I, is I in your body, you. and 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 maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're not in the right body. Maybe that, I and like that's I think what a lot of trans not, people that's believe. That's not how I view my transness. You know what I mean? Okay, and, that doesn't matter. That's not what I'm right. talking. I'm not talking about your view. I know you're 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 cool. That's not what I'm talking. Right, about. but there's a I'm lot. Saying, but, I'm saying generally the way this is presented yeah. is like the way you would teach an eight year old about gender, and that from the progressive narrative now is yeah. you would say, hey, so when you were born, we thought that you were a boy, right? Okay, because you had a penis, but now you're old enough. To start thinking, are are you a boy? We don't know. We have to get to know you and figure out who you I, really are. I don't are. think what, anybody's and, and, talking about like like impl like doing that sort of implication to a kid. Oh, right? they I are. Think it's, oh, I believe. Okay, so there really might be some people, are. but literally nobody on this panel support. That's like the most extreme. No, we don't support. I don't think. I don't. Support no, but that, that, I would still, say that honestly, no. trans like pushing that kind. I I'm I'm of the opinion that like a trans kid like throughout history like. If they're trans, they're gonna find out. You don't they have know to, they like, are. Like yeah. you have, like for me personally, at least, like they didn't have to teach me about trans people for me well, to know. How do you explain wrong. the explosion in trans? Oh, there's. Youth. Because, oh, I would love to talk about this. Thank you for asking. So, well, be, my, sorry, that was God too much. <laughs> no, but my my my, okay. my counter argument is that you if you can't you give a counter argument when you haven't heard his argument yet. Yeah. No, to what you just said is oh. that I'm saying they'll they'll just know of like no you can you can I think you can talk people into being trans. oh you can totally talk people okay. into it 100%. so can I can I make a parallel to mm -hmm. you Mr. So they don't can just make, don't just know can I make a parallel to you Mr. Yeah. Mr. Girl of course okay so DID look at DID right there's a, yes. you see this explosion all of a sudden of people yeah. and kids thinking they have DID right and it's like a social it is a social contagion because the the disorder people who actually have DID there's i guess there's debate about whether it's a real thing but i believe DID well is, there there is a debate that's what i'm saying we don't know okay but i i or believe that DID is can you let me finish really quick? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Just, Just keep let me talking. Finish. Talk over yeah. him. So, okay. So DID, I believe, is like a trauma. Like DID, like it, in the way that it should be viewed as a traumagenic disorder. The etiology of tra trauma. However, there is a group of people who say they have DID who don't have trauma. And they are these people who are, it's like a social contagion. With trans people, the thing is that there are trans people out there who are now identifying as trans because of it, it becomes like a social contagion in social groups. The problem is that this was studied and marketed as ROGD, which is, I think, at a surface level, is a fair concept. There is a thing of like teen girls thinking that they're trans and they're not. But TERFs like and rad films kind of took that and and kind of like went off the walls with it. When in reality, there's a way to address that phenomenon without like coming to these like extreme conclusions that like okay well there this is a problem so like you don't have to make it turfy you know what i mean you you know, could... every every trans person i've ever interviewed has this in group of real trans people and then out group of fake trans people and they <laughs> they always don't well, no, let me fucking finish because i let you finish and it hurt me really badly <laughs> every trans person defines themselves as the in group and then has this bunch of loser outgroup trans people that aren't real trans people <laughs> and real trans people just fucking know and those they they think yeah of course they think they know they would say the exact same thing as me but for them it's social contagion i'm the real deal and so how, how do you how do you synthesize that into some kind of coherent lesson plan for children like what do you right. what are we going to so, tell them that's in every my trans, like in, every trans in person thinks they're like 90 percent of trans people are fake but except them <laughs> In my trans medicalist YouTuber days, this is what I, I would have agreed with you. But I've I've realized now I can't I can't go with that anymore. So what I believe right. is that I believe that like 
the thing is that there are a bunch of people who are all identifying as trans who are having completely different experiences. There are people like me and Buck who are probably experiencing the same thing. And it's like, you know, I would maybe call it like transsexual, something more like that. And then there are maybe people who are oh, starting to transition for different reasons. And it's not so much that I can say that they're like fake but trans they people. Think, they don't think they're doing it for different reasons. They think they're doing it for the same but they, reason. Well, but there are no, some, I, I, okay, if I could just suggest something, Calvin, then you can take this, okay? I think that broadly speaking, okay? I think you can broadly split trans people into two groups, if I may, okay? I think that broadly you have- Real kind ones of the, and fake ones. <laughs> yes, actually true, yes. Is what, that's what I would say if I was being edgy. But uh -oh, I, think, I think broadly speaking, uh -oh. we have real trans people. We have trans people that experience dysphoria an intensely discomforting feeling that is caused by an incongruence of mind and body. You have these people and they typically want like group support, help, affirming surgeries, places to alleviate that dysphoria, which usually involves some form of social medical transitioning. That's like kind of the older, like the transsexual. Now we have newer things, which is trans people without dysphoria. As soon as you eliminate the dysphoria, you've opened a box of 50 trillion different possible things, and they might be in different groups. But I think that you can broadly like differentiate trans people between when, when they say like I'm part of the in group and the out group. I think it's usually talking about people that are like I think dysphoria is like an important or some part of the trans experience, and then people are like dysphoria has nothing to do with being trans. Wait, I want to be anything. Like maybe. Yeah, go. Can I ask you to replace dysphoria with incongruence? Because if you say dysphoria, it's like the trans medicalist thing. But okay, I, I understand like... that. I think people are really scared yeah. of being trans medicalist sometimes. And I'm I not. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. But, I'm the, a but, it, only... but if you, the minute you're viewed as transmedicalist, you're you're completely written off. Here, so that's yeah, I understand. I... I understand what you're saying. The only problem is that like, and this is because I'm going by two emails that I got where people think of this, and this is what they phrase to me. Okay, dysphoria is like the defining mindfuck of your entire puberty. So to to an incredibly dysphoric trans person, when you I, I, I'm speaking, this is all third party because I'm not trans. So if this doesn't connect, I understand. But for, for, for the way it was described to me is if you're an intensely dysphoric trans person, if another person says, oh yeah, I'm trans too. And I also have an incongruence, but there's no dysphoria. The trans person with dysphoria has no fucking idea what that person is talking about. Like, what do you mean when you say you have an incongruence with no dysphoria? Because the incongruence is like what you described earlier. It's not like people use the wrong pronouns, or it's not like you're sad that you're dressed as a pretty. It's that you have like this deeply disgusting, discomforting feeling in your body that something is so wrong that like the second you start taking HRT, as soon as you see your body change, like something is being alleviated within you that is so deep that it's like unshakable. That, that's so that's that like my understanding. Case yeah. That was yeah. the case for me, right? Yeah. Like, that was the case for me. But what I've kind of, like, I think that, like, all... So, like, when we're... Obviously, when people are born, everybody has, like, pre... You have, like, a predisposition to, like... It's a kind of, like, not extreme. But so, like, for example, if you have somebody who's born with, like, this underlying gender incongruence who has a predisposition to being kind of, like, good at coping with mental health adversi like adversities, that incongruence might manifest as more discomfort. Because when I say dysphoria, I'm talking about the clinically significant, like, di like the criteria. Because we can have a whole debate. I think dysphoria as, like, a just the construct of, like, sure. the, like feeling distressed. Yeah, I'm talking about diagnosis. I, I, I think I agree with you. And this has always been the problem. Initially, transmedicalists only had themselves to blame. But, like, the problem is that transmedicalism quickly becomes Oops. hardcore gatekeeping. Where and I agree with you. It might be possible that some, okay, somebody might have an incongruence, but they're not, they're not like thinking like I want to fucking kill myself because this is so horrible. It's more just like ah oh, fuck, this sucks. But whether it's because of their resilience or who they are, they can deal with it better. Um, I do agree that it's bad to be a trans person that says you need dysphoria. And when I say dysphoria, I mean you better be ready to fucking slit your throat because of how much you hate yourself. Otherwise, you're not a real trans person. That type of gatekeeping is really toxic. I do agree with yeah. that. Yeah. That's why I say there's difference kinds of people like sure. i do consider myself a transsexual more medical side of that and we have newer trans people who don't ha want to have or have mm -hmm. dysphoria but destiny you were want on to, I to you i kind of went on a really like niche little thing there but destiny you were on the in general kind of going on this point though where like there are trans people who i think it's more about the trans people who have something immutable integral to them it, like that is unchangeable it yeah. is unchangeable but then you have you all have these other people that are referring to like i think when you and buck i think when you guys are talking about like this in integrated idea of gender it's fundamentally different than this new age of person that yeah. is talking about like they have autism gender or they have like dear gender or like the like their genders yeah. are when they what they, when they say gender. yeah when they say gender what they're really talking about is like forms of expression which is fine yeah. you can express so that's awesome but yeah. it's not like your gender it's it's a fundamentally different thing right you don't have dysphoria because you don't have the same you know tail that bambi had in the same way that a trans person mm -hmm. might have dysphoria because they feel like their body is not matching the sex that is being 
like express right, their and mind. both are calling themselves the same, the same thing, thing, even though that's they have right. completely different needs. Exactly, and that's, that's the right. problem needs because you guys are conflating yeah. gender ideology as like yeah. all these people who are calling themselves trans when there's like kind of two, two that's separate right. groups, and they have di they need to be labeled as different things because it's that's just right. it's not 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 one's fake and one's not real. It's just that both it's are real, different. but they're different things. So trans well, people problem, now though, identify as trans. I don't identify as trans. I identify as a man. So in the newer generation, a lot of these youngsters identify as trans. And so there's their difference I, too. I, I think they trans. take it on as identity choice. It was never an identity choice for me. It was always a way and a means to become a man, if that makes sense. Yeah. We're talking a lot about these two different groups without addressing, you know, some of the issues is validity. Is there validity to one group mm. versus the other? Does mm. one group merit uh, childhood treatment over the other. I say no, um, but because there there isn't a way, there isn't a way to identify the difference between these two groups, except with after the fact criteria and judgments about the other. And and not after the fact. You could have a kid go in for for psychological evaluation, and they can tell the you. Oh yeah, yeah. You psychological evaluation. Well, like, do uh, we sure. think that kids should be given any kind of psychiatric drugs at all, like below the age of eighteen? Because you, you can't really tell somebody has chronic. Depression I think I think or... it depends on the. Ri I think I think transitioning is inherently harmful to the body. So yeah, it is most. So it is. Right. So there's, gotta, there's, there's there has to be a trade off. Like, I, it, my definition. Well, we don't even talk about that. What about putting testosterone in the body? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think to call I, it harmful, I think is is it's that's a value judgment. I, I think it's, it's yeah. Uh, yes. What if a it is, man has but, to that's, but that's how we uh, that's how we decide what is harmful and what is not. We make a value judgment of like, well, what I want that to happen to me, and if enough of us say no, then we think of it as harmful. Yeah, but I mean, like for stuff well, that fucks right. with your brain chemistry, right? Like if we're talking about like SSRI, testosterone. Or, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, saying, I'm saying like, what about like all forms of psychiatric drugs? Yeah, they are all somewhat harmful mm -hmm. to, to differing, differing degrees. But I would say yes. getting surgery is like d definitionally harmful in, in some way, um, unless you start defining your sex organs as things that like don't are, aren't right. you or you're, aren't really part of you. And then you're removing like you're a not, growth. You're, you're not you're but, not putting value on how like severe the dysphoria yes. is yes like right well i'm sorry the well, I, I, more I, harmful yes. than the I, surgery that's true so i Hopefully. don't i don't value that that much that's true but also um yeah so if you're asking me then like it's it's never worth it but i'm talking about how we define it as like a society we have to have some evaluation of harm versus how badly you need it versus how old you are but that's yeah. why I think it's I important for people like me to be visible so people can see it did help me. And I am here and I am alive and I am functioning. And I am a big part of the world. The, even though I will agree with you, you know, long term use of testosterone has done things to my body. That is not OK. But that being said, I'm willing to take that on as as mm -hmm. a person who needs it. I'm willing to take on the negative effects of the testosterone on my body. And that's my yes. choice as a but, as an adult to do that. But, so I agree exactly. with you on that. But I also want people to understand that it's really important for us to be in the world so people can see wow buck really did do this i might not agree with it but it really changed his life he really became a good person he's alive and he's happy and that's what i want really the world to see you don't ever have to agree with me all you have to do is understand that it saved my life yes but i so yeah so i think nick is getting at how do we define these two groups calvin yeah. saying that we can just do an evaluation but like we don't that's they evaluation mean, like but that's like who's doing the evaluating do they so believe in this so, do they believe in this shit or not as this is my the thing. First question. there's a problem with psychologists nowadays where there's a lot of psychologists out there who <laughs> will just affirm 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 and they won't explore at take the time to explore like what else all the possible yeah. mental health issues that could be going on with a person who wants to transition at a young age mm -hmm. um like i don't there's I a problem with psychologists today in which there are some who will not affirm no matter what they insist on exploring and they just will not affirm the gender when we know that gender dysphoria is real and they will not get on board instead they insist on other types of treatment and that is just the problem right now this is a psychology problem and with that little hot mic drop i have to go gentlemen because i have one hour and 13 minutes to spend with my wife before i have to do my own show uh, Mr. Girl, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, to the panel. I love all of you. You're all very transgender and super gay. And just like <laughs> uh, as the only black man here, I have to sign off. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you for, thank you right. for coming. Yeah, I it's been fun. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious, dude. Funny.
I gotta, I gotta leave too, my friend. So, All right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thanks as for well. having I, me. I, I, great yeah, it's just, you, Calvin. it was great to meet hey, you. I really appreciate Contact it. Contact me. Okay. Thanks, I'll you guys. Okay. Thanks a lot for coming. It's I been fun. Thank you. thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye, Buck. Now that those guys are gone, we can really get into the kids. I would right? love to talk to you, this <laughs> girl, about this because I know you're a psychology major. You were a psychology yeah. major, right? Well, yeah. no, he actually had clinical training. We found that out. The other <laughs> That's day. not That's all extensive true. clinical one training. Of, no, but. no, no. One of my fans uh, came up with a conspiracy theory that I'm secretly a failed psych psychologist, and uh, <laughs> Stephen really likes the idea. Yeah, you were uh, terminated for ethical violations, probably. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I believe that I I believe in a, I, they, there needs to be a really huge overhaul of the gender dysphoria. So I I'm like so I'm so um what's the word I am so passionate about this. I believe that like they should they should really focus on honing in the gender dysphoria criteria and like in the DSM. And on top of that, this is something I've like kind of proposed, and I don't I I don't know 100 percent how they do this, but I think there should be a way to not only measure if someone has dysphoria, but to measure the severity of it. Like if they could mm -hmm. take all these traits that you could possibly be dysphoric about, whether it's your secondary sex characteristics your genitals your um just your, well, um, just yeah. certain traits and and um like evaluate how severe the dysphoria is on each of those different um like okay so we, we plug it into a formula and then we say uh you know what you're you almost were dysphoric i mean enough, it's the best you all were almost dysphoric enough to transition but well, no, there. no, Sorry. but it would be a way to <laughs> come like back, help. come back when it's a little worse. It would be a way to help somebody. It would be a way to help determine how, like, if so, to say, like, okay, this is imminent. This is imminent. I think you, you, the that. problem is, I don't think he thinks this is a real thing. So you guys are having like a conversation that's way past the point. Is there anything you could say, Destiny? Anything? No. Well, <laughs> my argument would be over whether or not being trans is real, right? Because if, if you think it's real, and if he's a reasonable person, which I think he is, if you think it's real, then there must be some question or some diagnostic criteria that we could use to differentiate between people that are actually trans and are just having confusing issues as a teenager. But the problem is, Mr. Girl sees all of this rests on some spectrum, and there's not like this is the trans part and the only way to treat them is medically and these are the non-trans people he sees it all as just like a lot of people have a lot of kind of fucked up problems a lot of us have problems with their bodies some of us have eating disorders some of us wish we were women some of us whatever and it's just kind of stuff that we have to learn to live with in life and we don't use like medicine to treat every single potential thing if somebody walked into the office and said fuck i watched all the pirates of the caribbean movie and i really want an eye patch and a peg leg can you chop my shit up the doctor would never say okay fine we'll do that that's just something that you have to learn to live with that's kind of like the side that he's presenting you get me, Steven. I know, I try. And I mean, then what's the point of your, like, of the, having the conversation then if you're not going to budge on it? You know what I mean? Well, you're here to budge him. Well, yeah, that you're here to budge him. But I mean, him. I'm but sitting here. Change, change my mind, Calvin. Well, no, I mean, the conversation was supposed to be about uh, transal culture. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and so our, the freedom, the freedom to, to have this conversation. Yeah. Uh, and and whether that's like, like, do you, I know you think I'm wrong. Do you think I'm so wrong that I should be banned? Or do you think I'm so no. wrong that I should like, you're right. So that's what the discussion was originally supposed to be about. But yeah, we can be like, I'm happy to get into the weeds, but I, I, I don't know. I have no, I haven't changed. If my you really wanted so to do a panel like this, you needed to grab the demon mamas of the world and bring them on. <laughs> Please bring her here. Please. No, she, she won't, won't, she won't come she into won't a chat with me. me. Oh, they, she yeah, won't get she's on definitely with not me. coming into here. Yeah. But, she uh, banned me multiple yeah. times. <laughs> you never know. I just want to say I want to give a huge shout out tonight, okay, to Dick, who I know has suffered. <laughs> Hi, Dick. Have you ever been in a conversation like this for this long before? Uh, I'm gonna go identify as an alcoholic <laughs> after this. Oh my god! It's the easy. This is the easiest stream I've ever done. I Not will say. I will say that conversations about cancel culture have the like potential to be the best conversations, but the problem is you'll never get the people that hate each other in the same panel, so they're always horrible. Because, because of cancel culture. Mama. Yeah, but I, I mean like the problem is the people that want to cancel us will never come on and talk to us. And if they did, it would be like, it would be exciting. You'd be screaming matches. That's like, true. I think you should be fucking banned from me. It's like, oh yeah, well why do you think I should be banned? Fuck you, you know? But that, but those two worlds like never collide. Are you mad? So it's like, Are you mad? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. think we need a moderator anymore. Dick, if you want, do you want to, yeah, do you want to? Yeah. I'm going to hop jump? off and grab food. Well, I was going to ask you, do you, you want to say what you think about any of this stuff? No, because I don't want to lose my Patreon. Uh, I do have one question, Calvin. Uh, you think you can, you, can tra you can get transitioning drugs as a teenager, right? You think that's good, as I understand your reasoning for it. I think that it's good for certain people, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, do you think there should be a lower limit to when you can get a beer? Like, if you're getting transitioning drugs at 15, can I get a Takati at 15? Um, 
I just think that there's a difference because like it. one is medically necessary and one is yes or no, care. Calvin. Honestly, yes fuck no. Fuck it. I used to drink it for disease, my friend. I don't know if you're up to the literature on that. Yeah, but Legal I don't think we treat alcoholism drugs. with more alcohol. Well, if you're an alcoholic, you do, I guess. I, call, I guess we call that self-medication, huh? Hey, if they're, if they're buying HRT Thank online, you. yeah, maybe, yeah. Thanks a lot. Good, 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 to you. good to talk to all of you. Good to meet you, Calvin. Nice good to meet show. you, Dick. Thank yeah. you for hitting it out of the park, Dick. I really appreciate it. I did a, I did good reading on your questions, right? Yes, you're great at reading. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya. Have a good one.